So what is up everyone? Hopefully you guys are all having a pretty chill Saturday, but even if your night is not going well, I'm pretty sure that you're doing a lot better than the subject of today's video. So as you can see from the title, this is going to be a stream analyzing Stephen G.C. Coates, the musician predator from uh, the original Dateline to Catch a Predator Riverside Sting. There's a lot to say about this guy. There's quite a story and he's one of the few predators who tried to keep a public profile even after the sting so in this analysis we're going to first be taking a look at the entire chat log i'll be doing my typical reenactment of both the predator and the decoy the predator and the decoy and then we'll watch the actual footage with chris hansen and then finally we have to take a look at the fucking song that this guy wrote about his experience on to catch a predator so without any further ado let's just get right into the into the chat log reading Stephen Coates is member. This is taken exactly from Perverted Justice, by the way. Stephen Coates is memorable from the Riverside, California Dateline sting due to showing up looking to show off his horrible Muzak. It took a long time to get through the system, but Coates was ultimately found guilty via jury trial. He received 36 months probation, 180 days in jail to be served on weekends, nearly $6,000 in fines, and he, much re and he must register as a sex offender and complete counseling and treatment programs at his own expense. That is the fate that befall this fucking dude. And here are the notes from the actual person who is typing the conversation with Coates. So this is going to be straight from the perverted justice decoy themselves. Contributor notes from Almond Joy. Stephen W. Coates was part of the Dateline to Catch a Predator in Ri Stephen W. Coates was part of the Dateline to Catch a Predator in Riverside, California, in the early 2006. His case took a while to work its way through the justice system and is finally resolved. He opted to his right to a trial by jury, and it did not take the jury long to convict him on all three counts. Count one: attempted lewd act with a child under 14. Count two. Attempted attempt oral copulation 14 under 14 unconscious or asleep. Count three attempt sodomy with child under 14 years. Stephen drove over an hour to the sting house and was very reluctant to speak to Chris Hansen, yet he did admit he was wrong. He was found with numerous condoms, 17 or 19, I think, and he told the arresting officer that he had those in case he ran into ran into anyone that wanted to get down. Keep in mind that Stephen was married at the time. Oh yeah, just you got to burn the dude because he was fucking cheating on his wife. He also had Viagra and lubrication, all waiting for his sexual romp he had planned with a 13-year-old child. I call it rape, not a romp. Yeah, these are pretty cheesy. The perverted justice decoys have a lot of um, a lot of cheesy stuff. Oh, so like I'm gonna do super chats a little differently for the past few streams. I had a bot that was just reading the super chat. Um, I disabled the bot because I heard that it kind of like disrupted from the overall flow of the video. So I'm still going to try to read out all the super chats that I see. Um, I might forget them if I do. Like, I'm sorry. I appreciate all of them. And uh, yeah, so we have a first one from Chris Canal, which says, sorry, I'm poor. Love the stuff. They'll keep it up, bro. You watching is enough. Like, I'm extremely grateful for everyone who who tunes into these and who's down to like contribute to the conversation. So, like, yeah, there's totally no obligation to do anything in a super chat. Like, I'd be, I I did this without any uh, financial incentive, and I'm definitely down to keep doing it without financial incentive. Which is why there'll never be ads on the channel. Still, by the way. Okay, so back to this. The wonderful team at Riverside Sheriff and DA office should be proud of this case. Open and shut just took a long time to march through their courts they've referenced that this was a long trial stephen coates was pretty educated he had uh uh some kind of equivalent to a master's degree a master's of business or something business administration so he has a pretty a pretty highly skilled job and he has a pretty rigorous degree so i wonder if he makes a lot of money or if he at least had a lot of money to hire good lawyers who would drag this through the, the legal system I enjoyed working with this ADA and the few others that I have come in contact with during the course of the operation in Riverside. Stephen spent a lot of time at trial trying to get the jury to believe that he was going to see someone of age or older because he wrote adult contemporary music. That's the reason? Because he says that he's a musician who writes music for adult, therefore the person that who identified themselves as a 13-year-old had to be 
an adult like just because he wrote that's an that's an absurd argument i mean it's so hilarious to actually see some of the arguments that these lawyers will make with a fucking straight face uh, it's pretty crazy how hopeful some of these guys predators in particular are when it comes to fighting uh tcap charges as you can see from the conviction report, they did not believe him. Read for yourself how it takes him a little over 10 minutes to bring up sex, and then he tries to convince the 13-year-old that anal sex is better the first time because it still leaves one a virgin. How considerate. Stephen left his wife and drove <laughs> Stephen left his wife and drove over an hour with multiple condoms, lubrication, and Viagra to spend time with and possibly rape a 13-year-old. Thank goodness this time it was just Dateline and the Riverside Sheriff's Office waiting. Wow, that's a pretty fucking hilarious, um, hilarious way to describe the events that led to the, the destruction of this guy's fucking life. So let's get into it. This is the chat log itself. His screen name, m 4 pixeling I have no idea what the fuck it means, is highlighted just to make it easier to see uh, which lines he says. And then, of course, the decoy name is Green Day Chick, which is pretty funny because it's like referencing a band and he's a musician. Without really looking into the chat log, I predict he's going to be using his music heavily as a reason that the decoy should meet with them. Like, oh, you like Green Day? I'm a musician, too. Bro, I just lost my game two seconds before winning. Gasai, you know, that sucks. Thank you for that, though. Yeah, that's dude. Sometimes you lose things right before you win. Sometimes it's like, um, you know, you could you could be right on the cusp and then something fucks it up. Such is life. OK, so January 3rd, 2006. Hi. OK, initiated by Steven. So here we go. Hi, what city? I mail 42 Los Angeles for discreet lady. 13 female riverside classic nice pick lonely without your friends yeah how is school there it's okay see so he's he's going to immediately acknowledge the fact that she's 13 by talking about school since that's the only thing i mean a 13 year old is not going to have a lot else going on in their life other than school so he's clearly aware that this is probably going to be someone who is the age that they said they are and he's going to try and tailor the conversation as if he was speaking to a 13 year old wow it's pretty ridiculous already just uh looking at the kind of arguments that he was giving in court oh how is school there it's okay any new friends a couple that's good been on yahoo long or just myspace i had an old pro but i couldn't oh geez the spelling is going to be atrocious I had a, I had an old pro, but I couldn't chat anymore. What is old pro? Old Yahoo profile. Okay, what are you into? Wow, an ambiguous question. Of course, the, the reason he's probably asking is like sexually, but then the question is open-ended to have enough plausibility to where he's like, oh, well, you know, I meant, I meant like, what kind of shows do you watch or something? Okay, what are you into? Hmm, I like to chat with my friends in NM. Okay. And listen to music. I love Green Day. That's perfect. <laughs> That's per and as the as a musician, this guy is just going to be thinking jackpot. He's immediately going to latch on to that. They are cool. Yeah, of course, the next line. They are cool. I write songs myself. <laughs> really? Yes. They look cool. I'm trying to sell them. Do you talk a lot? Do you t do you talk to a lot of people online? Right. So as far as him wanting to sell his songs, I'll talk about this a little bit later on. Stephen Coates has a YouTube channel. The link should be in the description of this video if you wanted to check it out, where he has like a bunch of his songs that are already up. Uh, we're going to analyze one later. He runs advertisements on those songs, so it's like it's kind of crazy that this guy is finally able to make money off of his songs, even though 99% of the people who click on his fucking shitty YouTube profile are just doing so to troll him with TCAP comments. Like, it's kind of crazy that, I mean, at least he's able to get people who are providing him a way to run ads on his channel on his music. It only, it only cost the destruction of his credibility in his personal life. My songs are pop rock, some adult contemporary and blues. No. Just your buddies, I take it. Yeah. Okay, well, be careful on Yahoo. 
some strange people. Yeah, he knows from experience how fucking strange the people are. Uh, do you talk about sex and things like that? You can tell me anything. It's okay. I have. It is fun. Been with any boys or men? That's really, that just highlights the level that this guy is at. As soon as he starts talking with the decoy, he asks her about school, which would be relevant if he thought he was talking to someone who's a minor, who's, who's 13. And then he immediately starts talking about sex with boys and men. And him asking or men is him attempting to normalize the shit that he's trying to do right now because it's, it's, it's so inappropriate. He's trying to write it off like, oh, because if you were already being abused by someone, it wouldn't be a big deal. That's kind of the, the line that he's, that he's going for with this. Please cover it from Dom DeMonte. Please cover Dustin McFetridge. Wasn't going to do it, Pred. Hey, that's funny you said that. I was thinking about doing, I, I still might do this. I was thinking about doing like an entire Dustin McFetridge analysis where I recount the entire chat log, which is insanely long. The chat log is so long. It'll take me like five hours or something to read it. I'm not kidding. It's extremely long. And then his interrogation. There's a lot of Dustin McFetridge footage. That's a very real possibility, though, dude. I might be down. But it I'll just have to slog through like a fucking brutal marathon to do it. Yes. Been with any boys or men? <laughs> been? In a sexy way. Oh, lol. Soretta. <laughs> Instead of sorta. Soretta. Lol. Kisses, touching. Yeah, he's trying to get into the fucking dirty details of, of whatever the decoy is going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Sucking? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, dot, 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 dot. Wow, it's like he's disappointed by that. What Green Day songs do you like the best, right? He's saying, well, what Green Day songs do you like? So I can Google them right now so we have something to talk about. American Idiot. Okay, how tall are you? Five one. Nice. You seem like a very sweet girl. I'm more your parents' age. Is that okay with you? That's really weird. Once again, so he's going to say, I'm more your parents' age, and then claim that he thought he was talking to an adult because he writes adult contemporary music. Like, really, bro? It's very clear that he was talking uh, to someone who would be 13. Oh, before I start, bro, you are a legend. Please cover Ernest Timmons. Law. Yeah, he's another one. He's another one. You know, that fucking guy, Kevin, has ruined too many lives. It's time that someone finally spoke on Ernest's behalf and exposed that bastard Kevin at the base for setting him up. I say, sure. Okay. Are they cool people? I'm very open. So you could ask or talk to me about anything, okay? Right. And by that, he just means, please talk to me about sex. That's what he's, that's what he's saying with that. Okay. Can I add you to my list? Okay. Do you watch cams online? I have it. Okay, they can be pretty sexy. Wow, he's already going there, um, trying to send the obscene material to the person who says they're 13. Oh shit, hold on. So Nighthawk98, thanks for the amazing content and hours of laughs. <laughs> and then Ben Schneider, love your material. Would you consider a cover of The Rabbi Predator? I absolutely would. Dude, I'm down to do fucking all of them like i started this channel a long time ago and was away just not making any content and it's a lot easier to do these in streams like it makes it to where it's a lot easier to just do a thorough analysis without having to spend fucking hours editing it and doing all the bullshit so yeah that's a very real possibility too okay so yeah he's so he was talking about cams okay they can be pretty sexy okay if you like that sort of thing. Yeah. I have to get going. Okay. What's your name? Amy. Or AIM. That's weird. Amy? Is that like a hipster way of spelling Amy? Amy. You? Steven. Which is his real name. So we have one of these, uh, one of these trusting predators who's willing to give his actual fucking name. You coming back? Great meeting you, Amy. If I can get to know you and trust you, then I could give you my website and you can listen to my songs. Yeah, that's the line that Stephen uses with all the fucking, with all the ladies. Do you have high speed internet? <laughs> what a relative and subjective question. By high speed internet, does he mean like 
whatever kilobytes per second like what what does it mean like 200 kilobytes a second or something high speed internet now is so different than high speed internet in 2006 that's funny yeah okay then you could hear them i'm glad you like music do you play any instruments or sing no are you smart in school right and this dude has the equivalent of an mba so um he's he's probably adept at the whole school game he's probably someone who knows his way around a classroom yeah i like smart girls where are you from in nm it's new mexico oh yeah santa fe new mexico like fucking uh, breaking bad wow that's a very nice city yeah did your dad get a new job? Is that why you moved? That's pretty bizarre. But once again, this dude, he, he's talking to this individual exactly as you would talk to someone who, who was 13 by asking about, oh, so you moved? Was it because your dad got a new job? He's making a presumption that the dad's still in the picture. And oftentimes the decoys make the dad out of the picture. Um, I, I don't know what the decoy is going to do this time, but that's, that's a, a strategic move on his part. Yep. It happens. I'm near the beach in Santa Monica. It's beautiful here. Yeah, this guy makes me ashamed to be a fucking Californian. It's so cringy. Like, so much of his fucking shitty music is based on fucking California beaches and whatnot. It happens. Yeah, I'm near the beach. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Okay, really have to go now. Okay. Bye, and nice meeting you. I might be on later tonight, so PM me if you see me. Okay. Did you allow me to add you? I don't see your name on my list. Yes, I did. Hmm, doesn't show up for some reason. Maybe you're invisible and don't know it. Anyway, PM me when you see me. Okay. And bye for now. You back? Yes, hi again. Not gone long. I made some dinner, but my wife still is at home. Jeez, he's just going to drop the fact that he's married. I wonder how the fucking decoy is going to respond to this. That's pretty crazy that he's willing to volunteer that he has his, a wife that he's married. <laughs> From Jake Spinner. Hey, did you get my picture of Stew Pickles I emailed to you like a year ago? Uh, I might not. Uh, I, I might have. I might have forgot. I don't remember it. Um, but if you emailed it to me, I, I might have. Yeah, just uh, send me another email with it or something so i could know exactly what one you're talking about but that's funny i don't know the the profile picture that i have right here my active one i just made that um i turned it into like a little a little like logo i just edited out the original background and made it all white but yeah it's a pretty funny picture oh so may have to leave quickly when she comes okay son is here he's home from college Jeez, this dude's just like he is just putting on blast the fact that he's like a fucking boomer, like that he's very old, that he's someone who's going to be uh, considerably older than the person that he's talking about, talking to. OK, before then, Sloshy Bowl, dude, thank you for all the hours of entertainment you've put out. That idea for a massive video on Dustin sounds incredible. You should totally do it. Thank you, um, Sloshy. Yeah, it's looking like I will, it'll probably be like an entire weekend event. Like I'll, I'll have to like do the chat log on Saturday and then do the interrogation since that's like an hour, hours long on Sunday. It'll be a long thing, but yeah, it's, it's looking more and more like it's actually something that I'll be doing. <clears throat> um, oh yes. Yeah, so we were talking about this older gentleman's college son being home. Son is here. He's home from college. He's upstairs watching TV. His friend was visiting for a few days. Cool. He goes to school in New York. Wow. We just moved here from Pennsylvania. Ah, that explains it. So I've been born. I was born here in California. I've lived in California my whole life. I've actually only left California like once when I was a kid. I've spent like my entire life in California. And that's like, as soon as I saw this guy's pro profile on YouTube, like all of his songs are like beach. It's like, he, he's trying so desperately to like appeal to the, the, the California beach. Where's the beach, bro? Like he's, he's trying so desperately hard to appeal to that. I was like put off by it. I was like, dude, this is cringe. Like, um, so I guess that makes sense that he wasn't even born here yet. He makes the fact that he's now living in California, like this integral part of his online personality of him being a musician, uh, go fucking figure. We just moved here from Pennsylvania just this year. Cool. I just started doing 
more songwriting when we moved here. My background is in the sciences. Yeah, he has a technical degree. But I have 13 songs on my website. Nice. Does anyone else use your screen name? Uh, also saying, will any other people see the, imp the, um, the criminally implicating things that I'm talking to you about? Does anybody else use your screen name? No. Okay. Your mom might not approve of you talking to men. Just don't want to get you or me in trouble, right? Sure, this is just um, selfless altruism on Steven's part, right? It's not like he's the one who's, who's engaging in illegal act activities and behavior. It's just that he's concerned. Yeah, that would suck. Yee, <laughs> yes. What is it that you like about Green Day? They sing cool songs <laughs> and they are hot. Wow, the most kind of like uh, generic and bland answers that a person could give. That's funny. Okay, writing good songs is not easy. Yes, being hot helps, wink. Jeez, that's pretty fucking. I have, that makes Stephen GC's whole like sunglasses thing especially fucking cringe. He's going for like a Blues Brothers like fucking cool thing. I just, I clipped all these pictures that I have on this video, like the ones in the four corner where, um, or the four corners where, yeah, Steven has sunglasses on everyone. This dude's like all about the sunglasses. You look pretty hot yourself. Wink face. Oh, wink face. Thank you. Are your boobs big or small? 32A. Wow. And here we have the first uh, really disturbing line from Steven. Okay, much hair on your pussy. Of course, he's asking this question because the person has identified that they're 13, and them being 13, he's unsure as to what level of puberty they might be in. Yet, this guy's going to argue that he thought he was talking to an adult. So even though he'll say things like that, asking how much hair they have in their pussy, he's still willing to argue absurd things in court. It's just fucking mind-blowing. Not really. Oh, jeez. That's terribly sexy. So the fact that she's so young that she doesn't have that much pubic hair is terribly sexy to Mr. fucking GC. That's sick. That's terribly sexy. Really? Oh, yes. Nothing sexier than a bald pussy. That's why a lot of older women shave their hair. It's always sexy to look young. Yeah, I guess that's like this guy's fucking song. He has a song called like Always Be Young or some bullshit. So he, he does have a fascination with, with being young, even though for him it's like a sick fascination. Okay. What kind of touching have you done? Just rubbing. Does it bother you to talk like this? If it does, please tell me. Where did you rub? Right. If the decoy said she didn't like talking like this, he would probably then try and persuade her that it's actually not that big of a deal. I can't imagine a situation in which he'd be like, oh, okay, my bad later. Like he's obviously interested. The fact that she said she doesn't have much pubic hair is terribly sexy to him. Therefore, his, uh, his interest has been piqued. Between his legs. Oh, please tell me, where did you rub? Between his legs. Okay. Rubbed his cock. Yeah. Did you get wet? Yeah, he's going to be pretty explicit. I guess. He must have liked it, I'm sure. Was he really hard? Yeah. He probably wanted more, winky face. Lol, okay. She's all, okay, dude, I get it. Is your brother older or younger? Older. Also a teen, once again, acknowledging that this person is a teen. Here we have it in fucking black and white, also a teen. In order for the older brother to be also a teen, he has to be a teen as well. Was it one of his friends? He's 17, my bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do me a favor, okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's going to he's going to go. <laughs> this is pretty funny. So now he's going to try and use his technical expertise to shield himself from getting caught. He's now going to offer instructions on how uh, to prevent anyone from seeing this convo. OK, do me a favor. OK, click on conversation at the top of this window, then preferences, then archive, then click on. No, don't save any of my messages. Right. That's like the Lorna uh, delete your archives. OK. That way, there isn't a record of our talking. <laughs> so even while he's committing this crime, 
he had awareness that there could have been a rec a record of this and it's so funny that there is a record of this like this dude was talking to a fucking decoy here he is trying to give instruction on how to uh how to keep this this affair that he was trying to get going this abuse that he was trying to perpetuate he's trying to prevent it from ever getting out and it's like we know like this is all public record what he wanted did not come true in the slightest bit okay that way there isn't a record of our talking better that way okay did you do it yeah good girl off to run bye oh jeez <laughs> wife just got home okay i'm on later tonight if you're around okay wow a lot of okays this is like five or six okays in a row i can see you on my list now good brb okay but i have to complete the dinner oh you got to complete dinner not cook it great talking to you again you too i enjoy talking to you amy you sound very sexy you would be awesome to see naked really yes you are thin oh yes are you thin medium or pudgy mead perfect anyone ever licked you wow so before he actually ends the conversation he's like hold on i have to ask these last fucking these last sexual questions anyone ever licked you no it feels heavenly really oh yes i have to go it feels great for a guy too ttyl okay so that took place on january 3rd fast forward two days january 5th 2006 conversation reinitiated by M4 Pixeline, uh, Mr. GC Coates. Hi. Hi. Back in school? Yeah. Lots of homework? A little. Anything new and exciting? <laughs> no, lol. Same old shit, bro. I wish. I wish. Okay. Is your brother's friend still around sometimes? Wow, so he's he's trying to gear it right back to being sexual. So he's trying to make it sexual by not explicitly saying, like, hey, let's talk about sex. He's going to talk about the person whom she said she had some kind of sexual activity with. So this is just a roundabout way for him to get it back to sex talk. <clears throat> is your brother's friend still around sometimes? No. Did he feel any of you? Oh, he also might be just trying to see if there's any other competition in his mind. He's like, fuck, I don't want, I don't want this other person to, uh, to go to the cops about this. No. Did he feel any of you? <laughs> feel? Well, you said you felt some of him. Yeah, he felt me up. Did you like it? Yeah. Did he feel your pussy too? Got bumped. Okay. So, he must have got disconnected. He's like, anyways, like I was saying. So, did he feel you below too? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Wow, we're getting the single word answers from the decoy. Pretty much every response from the decoy has just been the single monosyllabic, like, yes, no, yes. And yet he, the decoy does not have to do much. Like he's so desperate to complete this fantasy. He's like, you can just give me the smallest fucking amount and then he'll just run, he'll run to the hills with it. <clears throat> so did he feel you below too? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. It does feel good to both. Uh, laughing face. Makes you want more. Yeah, I do. It. Do you enjoy talking about it? cyber no just in general <laughs> it's okay if you don't want to talk about such things just tell me okay once again here we have the um the reassurance from steven that he's such a good guy if the 13 year old didn't want to talk about sex he would stop even though he keeps bringing it up in direct and roundabout ways i wish okay hold on okay i don't want you to feel uncomfortable okay Ever see porn movies? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. They're pretty explicit. Wow. I doubt a 13 year old would be aware of what the word explicit means. Um, but I guess this guy might be a little insulated from, um, from everyday people. If he's like a fucking scientist and he has some highly technical science job, he's like, he might not be able to relate to average folk as well. Oh. 
can see everything. Okay. Have your girlfriends had sex? A few, yeah. Do you talk about it a lot? No. Do you like talking about sex? This dude keeps fucking asking that question. A little. I like to just do it. Lol. Oh, wow. What up, Wes Most? My boy, Wes. Uh, dude, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the $5. He just wanted Chris Hansen to buy his mixtape. Dude, um, Wes Most has a hilarious channel. You guys should check it out. Um, thank you for that too, Wes. It's good to it's good to see you, man. So where were we? Um, do you like talking about sex? A little. Yeah. I like to just do it. Lol. Cool. That would be awesome. Hold on, where are we? Smiley face. Is it easy for you to be free? That's a that's a weird way to ask like if a person is is willing to like like let loose or if they have low inhibitions if that's what he is if that's what he's asking about. Sometime. Okay, something to fantasize about. We'd be a nice tight fit. Smiley face. I'd like it too. For reals? Would be so awesome, but also very risky. Yeah. Do you masturbate sometimes? Yeah. What do you think about when you do it? Kissing cute guys and stuff. Okay, do you think about them being inside you? Yeah. It would be awesome for you to be riding me. Hmm. How much do you weigh? 125. A 125. Okay, how tall is your mom? Ah, 5'6", I think. You'll probably start growing taller soon. You play any sports? Wow, this dude is like, he's trying to construct such a vivid mental image of her. He's like asking all these questions. Like, do you have any scars or scratches? Like, he, he, he's trying to get as clear and precise of an image of what she looks like in his mind's eye before he goes through with the action. And of course, the longer that people think about something, the easier it is to finally do it. Um, it really is a slippery slope with some people. Some people can be so consumed by fantasy that they lose touch with reality. Ah. Yeah, do you play sports? Swim team. Fabulous. You must be in good shape. Yeah. All muscle. What events do you swim? Yeah, Cecil, all muscle. He's like, okay, now I'm imagining the athletic 13-year-old. Like, he, he's using all of these answers in the construction of this fucking, this image that he's making. 100 meter. Are you good at it? So-so, but I'm getting better. Are you all muscle or muscle and a bit pudgy? <laughs> uh, sad face. I'm a bit pudgy. Lol, that's okay. You'll grow out of it. Oh, he has a crystal ball too. Just watch what you eat. Muscle weighs more than fat. Wow, more uh, science with predators. He's like, I do have a background in science. I can give you a little bit of information about, about how fitness works. Okay, Doug Stokely, like the voices, make it that much better. Keep up the great content. Thank you. I do the voices, so it's a little bit easier to keep track of who's talking. If I didn't do the voices, it would probably like be confusing. But by giving the exaggerated voices, even though the predators often don't sound like like this, it's just easier to distinguish. Like a person could be playing fucking video games and like put this on in the background. They'd be able to know like exactly who's speaking. <clears throat> Although it's pretty rough on my voice, especially since I'm like fucking smoking weed too. Like this, it's, it's kind of, it makes my voice kind of haggard sometimes. Yeah. Do you swim a lot? That's what my coach say. Three to four times a week. Well, you sound like you're in good shape. Do you wear those clothes so it shows your tummy, right? He's trying to think like, who is this girl? And he's trying to imagine even... Above just imagining her, he's trying to imagine what her personality is and the kind of clothes that she wears on the regular. This dude is, is this guy must be someone who is highly imaginative and who's able to satisfy a lot of his urges with just, just thoughts. He's probably someone with a very vivid imagination, and that's why he's extracting all these details from the decoy. No. Oh, so she doesn't wear those revealing clothes. Sad face. Okay, good girl, winky face. Does brother know that you were with his friend? No. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Your secret. Our secret. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone of our conversations. Okay. 
you're young, so I don't want to get into trouble. Okay, I promise. Good girl. Right? So this dude, it's like, it's kind of crazy that he, and I'm, I don't remember the popularity of TCAP in 2006 particularly, but it seems like he's not suspicious. He doesn't think that he's walking into a sting. He's not even raising like the, oh, you could be lying. Like he's just completely trusting that this person is a 13 year old and that, you know, they did whatever with their brother's friend. Like he thinks this is legit. It's pretty crazy. I would assume that a guy who um had this kind of experience would be a little bit more skeptical, but, um you know, everyone's different and the predators all want to believe Please don't tell anyone of our conversations. Okay. You're so young, so I don't want to get into trouble. Okay, I promise. Good girl. My parents uh, my parents are going to be gone this weekend. I see. What would you like to do? So here we go. The decoy's like, by the way, my parents are going to be gone, you know? Dot, dot, dot. I don't know. I'm going to be bored, lol. Love to see you, but I don't think I could make it out there. My wife is home with me this weekend. Okay. But maybe another time. Okay. Maybe you could catch. Uh, maybe you could come to Santa Monica. <laughs> and then of course the decoy's like, how? <laughs> Just one question. It's like, dude, he's talking to someone who's thirteen. Um, someone who's who's in Riverside, California. Who I must say, they're in Riverside. That's where the stink took place. He's all, yeah. Just you know, come to come to Santa Monica. <laughs> Find a way, even though you're you're fucking thirteen. Maybe you could come to Santa Monica. How? Even if you did, not sure how long I could be free. Your brother would have to drive you. I could take the dog on a long walk. It's a long way to where you are. What the fuck? And then, of course, we have a hilarious, like, sideways annoyed face from the decoy. Okay, and another thank you from Nighthawk. What's your fave weed strain? Also, if you could do Jazzwinder Chima, that would be awesome. You know, I don't know if I'll do him because he's very professional. Would someone who looks as nice as him actually do that? I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe he was framed. No, I don't know what my favorite weed strain is. Probably um just like a strong indica, like some fucking granddaddy perp or something, or some other kind of like purple punch bullshit. I usually like that kind of stuff. But I mean, living in California and like smoke like where weed is legal, when I go to the dispensary, I'm getting like like a lot of AIDS. <laughs> like I smoke a lot of weed. I smoke a, a very large quantity of weed each day. So like I lose I lose track of like all the strains because like an eighth doesn't even last that long, you know? And like the eighths are always changing. The inventory is always moving at the dispensary I go to. So but yeah, I like like Indica stuff generally if I have, if I have a choice in it. <sighs> okay. So yeah, we left off on this serious face from the decoy. I would have to drive out there easier for you. I go to songwriter things in the evenings and weekends sometimes. Maybe that excuse would work. I wonder what kind of songwriting things he has. Is it like a songwriting class or something? Is this was this guy like in a fucking like songwriting class? That would make sense. Um, <laughs> it looks like he never really got the idea too. Although, like I said, after after we see Chris have his way with this guy, um, we'll actually be taking a look at one of the songs, one of the most infamous songs that this fucker ever wrote. Okay. Let me work on it. Okay. Not too sure if I can get away. Maybe Sunday morning. That would rock. Okay. Where would brother be? He goes to his GFs. So I would come there? Sure. Or somewhere close by you. Do you live near a shopping mall? Something like that? Oh, uh, so he maybe this is is him starting to get a little suspicious. He's like, hmm, might be a little too dangerous to go to the house. I don't know. Just come here. No one will see. <laughs> House or apartment? House. Maybe. Okay. It would be hot. <laughs> oh, and then we have the funniest spelling, this half to. You don't have to. H-A-F-T-A. -A. You don't have to do it. You could play with my cock. Wow. So we get straight to the um, solicitation of illegal behavior. Here we go. You could play with my cock. Right. From you could play with my cock. Yeah. Awesome. Ever see anyone suck cock? Wow, it's like this word cock just ignited the kind of fucking sexual avalanche that's going to come forth from, from Stephen GC. Oh, by the way, shout out to Gerard Smith. Thank you for that. Um, $10 too, bro. I appreciate it. No. No. 
could show you. How? When I come there. Oh, okay. If I come, you have to call me first. Have to hear your voice. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you're real, right? Because it'd be impossible for someone to to act like they're the decoy, right? Jeez, this dude's lacking in the critical the critical thinking skills a bit. Despite his advanced fucking degree. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Want me to call now? Home number or cell? <laughs> you tell me. Like, whatever you want, bro. Fucking let me know. Are you alone? Your cell is better. Yeah, of course. He doesn't want to fucking have any record of the house phone calling this. I can't call you. If you want. Now? Okay. We don't have to talk long. Just say hi. Oh, wow. They give this dude's fucking, um, his actual, his actual phone number. Very short. Alric for weed and destroying Mike Anderson's mom. Wow. Um, well, thank you, bro. Thank you for that, Alric. We have another, um, another communication specialist in the house. Thank you for that, bro. Uh, Steven, right? Use your cell. Yes. Okay. Hang on. Back. Yeah, my battery went dead. Don't call again. That's okay. He's all fucked now that that's out of the way. Like, don't, don't put me in any more fucking heat. Okay. Your cell phone? If anyone asks, just say it was a wrong number. <laughs> okay. This dude is so fucking trusting. He thinks that he thinks that he's so clever and that he's gonna be able to avoid all these fucking all these all these incriminating things that he's saying. Verified here. Your voice is so sweet. Oh, so he he must have called right after the right after the, the phone call. <laughs> Brian Yolen, more bong rips. Dude, my bong actually broke today. Hold on. My old janky ass broken bong today. Yeah, this bong that I'm ripping right now doesn't have as much of a loud noise. Like the other one that broke today was hell loud. It was like, like, it, like it made the loud gurgly noise when I would rip it. <laughs> oh god <coughs> thanks a lot brian no thank you bro thank you for the vibe though <coughs> your voice is so sweet smiley face i like you amy i like you steven thanks you're brave what kind of work do mom and dad do my dad's a salesman and mom's a dentist. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Why am I brave? For calling. Oh. Oh. Sad face. Oh, jeez. So here we go once again to the explicit and graphic sexual talk. Is your pussy wet? Now you know I'm real. <laughs> yes. Or it's an officer of the law with a very high voice with the smiley face. Yeah, he, he laughs about that. He laughs about the prospect of it being a setup. That's funny. We're both real. You sounded scared. <laughs> I am scared. Yeah, the, the woman, uh, presumably with the high-pitched voice, who was an adult, was probably scared. Like, they were probably hella nervous. Any decoy who's interacting with a predator or anyone who's even talking with these guys over the phone, like, that would be a really stressful situation. Because the person is a fucking predator, like, it's, it's, it's unnerving. It would have, like, a really high creep factor, you know, like, that uncomfortable tingling in your spine that's, like, something's not right. It would be probably a, a conversation that would be permeated by that anxiety. So it's kind of funny that he thinks because there's anxiety, he's like, oh, well, the person was anxious, therefore they must be a 13-year-old. You sounded scared. I am scared. Me too. Very exciting though. Yeah. Let me show you a pic. Can you see me here? Okay, where? In this window. Yeah. Okay. Like? Yeah. And play with it? Suck it? Wow, so is this him sending pictures of his dick or is it just a dick? Either way, it's him sending pornography to someone uh, who he believes is 13 and is therefore an illegal and despicable act. 
But yeah, I, I wonder if this is pictures of his dick. It's been ages since I saw the footage with Chris, so Chris might pull the picture out and be like, "Bro, is this your fucking cock?" <laughs> I don't, I don't remember. But um, for the sake of him getting convicted and for the sake of his own humiliation, I hope it was pictures of of his dick that Chris Hansen later fucking wags in his face. <clears throat> can play with it suck it cool <laughs> kayla cool with exclamations like to do that yeah me too any other pics of you no just my pro sorry okay no problem i'm really tempted to come and see you so incredibly hot but bro might be home or come home so risky he never comes home when they go out of town lol but you don't have to. Maybe he'll bring over his girlfriend. We'll keep talking. I'd love to do it. Okay. Oh, geez. You can explore your first cock. Here we go. More extremely damning and incriminating evidence. You can explore your first cock. Live and up close. This is like the fucking Jurassic Park angle. Like, you can see it for the first time live and, and up close. This guy sounds like he's hawking a fucking a theme park or something. Yum! Make it squirt. I have to get going. We'll be on later tonight. Is there a payphone near where you live? Or some phone other than your cell? This dude wants to play fucking secret agent. He's like, hey, go find some fucking change under your couch. Uh, go walk to the cell or walk to the anonymous fucking cell phone booth. Jeez, you really know this is 2006 because cell phone booths are still are still somewhat being used. <laughs> or or uh, payphone booths, I mean. Exactly so like these are such ancient fucking pieces of machinery like I've I've forgotten even what they fucking are. I don't know. I'll look. Can you give a phone card numb and then it's just calling an 800 number? Okay. Then no record of call on your home or cell number. Wow, so this dude is doing like the modern day equivalent of like suggesting the use of a VPN. Like he's like, how can we do this in a way that will not lead to us getting caught up? Oh, by the way, uh, Alaric, yes, we are we are real friends. Um, I do know Alaric in real life. Alaric's awesome, and we both have the same kind of uh, the same kind of degree. We're both communication students. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, uh, yeah. Back to the use of him wanting to use uh, the modern day equivalent of a VPN. Then no record of call on your home or cell number. Cool. Okay. Let me get it. Sorry, I got booted. Okay. Anyone home? Yeah. In your own room? Yeah. Okay. Phone card is 800-898-4626. Then pin is blah, blah, blah. Then my number. Still have it? Okay. Yeah. Kayla, cool. So you dial the 800 number. Then it will ask you for the pin. Then dial my number. Call from anywhere except G. So this dude is like giving so many different fucking instructions to this decoy. And then, of course, the decoy's all, got it. She's all, hey, no problem, dude. I got it. Don't use your cell either. That way we can talk discreetly. And just you and I will know. Okay. Cool. Can you try to call me tomorrow after school? I'll try. Don't call in the evening. In the evening. Okay. Just before about 6 p.m. You are cool, Amy. Okay, cool. I'll try. <clears throat> if you can't, it's okay. I just want to talk longer with you. Get to know you more. Okay. So we're both less nervous. I think what he actually means is solidify the sexual plans that he's been talking about this entire conversation. Um, so he just probably is, is, he probably is going to use this last bit of, of time to like try and seal the deal to make sure that the decoy knows exactly why he's going over. Yeah, good. I'm nervous too. Have you, oh, this is a bizarre way to say this. Have you ever played sex with your girlfriends? Is he kind of like hinting at the idea of like experimentation? Is that why he says played sex? Like, have you ever, is that what he's asking? Have you ever experimented with your girlfriends? Have you ever played sex with your girlfriends? No. Okay, do you ride horses? That's bizarre. No. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, sometimes when girls ride horses, their cherries break. 
oh, <laughs> understand? How could she understand? What he's referring to is like the hymen, right? The the breaking of the hymen, the the natural, like the the barrier above the or in the vagina, whatever the the anatomy of it. Um, so he's referring to this anatomical part with the metaphor of it being a cherry like unless the decoy knows that cherry means hymen and like that's what it means like he's making a lot of assumptions with this understand like you got it i guess difference between virgin and non-virgin oh okay the first time you fuck it breaks your hymen in your vagina wow so we're gonna have um life anatomy with predators this is a common theme and bleeds a little. The first time to fuck is not great, but afterward, it's great. Even if we get together, we don't have to do that. Okay. Did you learn all this in school or from friends? Friends. Or mom. Okay. Uh, okay. The doc would know if you're not a virgin. Okay. Have girls you know done fucking? Wow, that's bizarre. First he said play fucking, now he's saying done fucking. That's, that's just bizarre. A bizarre way to word that. Yeah. Wow, young. Did they like it? Yeah. The best feeling in the world. Did their moms find out? No. When you were there with your brother's friend, did he lick your pussy or just feel it? Just feel. Did you like the way it felt? Yeah. Did you come? I don't think so. Okay. Would you know it? Or, okay, you would know it. Believe me. Wow, so this dude's getting already extremely, extremely gra graphic and explicit. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Joey's TCAP channel. Another legend um, in the chat. One of the, the most important figures in TCAP. Like, dude, you are awesome. <clears throat> Anyways. But, yeah, back to the disturbing, the disturbing sexual bullshit with this dude. I'd love to make you come like crazy. Sounds fun. It feels great for a man to come in a girl's mouth. And for her to swallow it. Really? It feels absolutely awesome. Some girls love it, some don't. The swallowing part, that is. Coming in your mouth is okay. Some girls spit it out. Okay. I'll try. And some swallow. They say it tastes a bit salty. We would do these types of things first. Wow, this dude is going so fucking intense on, like, the graphic bullshit that's really disturbing. <clears throat> fucking is a big step. Yeah. Sometimes people just do anal sex first, then you're still a virgin. Wow, so here we're, we're, we're tiptoeing on what will be a hilarious aspect of the interrogation between him and the police, like... This is pretty funny. So the exact language that he's using right now will come back up in something that we're about to witness in a few in a few moments. So sometimes people just do anal sex first, then you're still a virgin. Wow, really? Yes. A lot of women love getting fucked in the ass. Some don't like it. Depends on how it's done. Okay. Won't it hurt? Have to use lubricant, make it slippery, and then it slide in slowly. It hurts if you do it fast with no lubrication. It feels great in your pussy, of course. Jeez, this dude is... And contrast the, the, the lengthy declarations of sexual shit that uh, GC is typing to the short monosyllabic answers that the decoy is getting. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that's all the decoy is saying. While he goes into these fucking sexual tirades. Yeah! Are you wet now, just thinking about it? Yeah! It sounds fun. Uh, it sounds fun. I have to go. We'll talk later or tomorrow. Okay. You're very cool. Great talking with you. Bye. Bye. 106-2006. Hi. Hi. You're up early. Can't sleep. Okay. Getting ready for school? No school today. Why is that? Teacher day. They do work or something. In service day, they call it. Okay, well, get some sleep. Have to go. Talk to you later. Maybe talk later today. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Evening. This is bizarre, disjointed language that he's using. I'm, like, trying hard to fucking follow it, but he's just being weird. Hey. Alone. Or is Big Bro home? He's home right now. Folks gone? Yeah. 
so tempting to come over, dot, dot, dot. But bro could pop in any time. Sad face. Correct. He's like, right? Like, I'm not just psyching myself out here, right? Like, there's a genuine reason for me to have paranoia, right? He doesn't usually, or he don't, he don't usually come home. Okay, you didn't call today? I couldn't, sorry. No problem. We can wait if it's too soon to get together. I just couldn't call. That's all. I know. That's fine. Lonely? Yeah. You can talk to me, winky face. Okay. What do you enjoy talking about? Hmm. Movies. <laughs> Music. Although she spells it mucus, like a misspelling of mucus. That's funny. What do you like talking about? A uh, mucus. <laughs> Snot. What about you? Similar. Have you seen any movies lately? Also sexy things. Narnia. Uh, does she mean uh, fucking, what is it? Like, uh. Oh my god, the C.S. Lewis books, Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe, that's it. That's funny, she just calls it, no, I don't, I don't even, I remember reading those books when I was a fucking kid, um, there was, there's like a whole little series of them, that's funny that the decoy just says Narnia, because I think what she's referring to is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, in which Narnia is like a, like a alternate dimension in that, that movie, or in the book and storyline. Was it good? Yeah! Yeah, it has a fucking tiger name, Aslan. It was great. I'd like to see it too. It's pretty good. I saw a match point. Uh, I saw a match point. Syriana, Miss Anderson presents lately. All good. Wow, that really dates. The only film I remember of those mentioned is Syriana. I think it's like a political um, Midwest, uh, Midwest kind of like thriller. Can you, from Westmost, can you take a bong rip for Callie Slime Bucket Witch Lady? It's her birthday and her Ford Festiva died. Oh, man. Yeah, here. Hold on. Let me grab it. You might hear me cough, but absolutely, dude. Let's do it. <coughs> that was for you, Callie, um, Callie Slime Bucket Witch Lady. <laughs> This bong is hella big. Uh, hella big. <clears throat> okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, so we were talking about um the the dated films that he's mentioning. Cool. Really tired today. Took my son to his plane flight this morning. Got up at five a.m. He's going to Philadelphia and then New York. He really grew up in Philadelphia, but then we moved here, similar to your situation. Damn, bro, he's going, is he going to school out of state? That shit's expensive as fuck. I'm looking at law schools and like, I'm probably going to go to a law school here in California because like, it's way too much. You get fucked in the ass if you try and go to a, 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 a college that you didn't, like, if you try and go to a college in a different state, yeah, you get, you get taken for a ride. If you have lots of money, I guess it's no biggie, but <clears throat> out of state tuition is a bitch. So he's visiting all his friends in Philadelphia tonight and for the next few days, all his high school buddies. Cool. Then back to New York. Have you traveled much? Not really. I would like to more. I enjoy it too. He played in a youth orchestra in Philadelphia. They went to China. Five cities. One year, uh, one year and Eastern Europe. Six cities and other years. That's, that's bizarre that he's mentioning the amount of cities within each place. Not only did he go to these fucking, these, these exotic lands, he also went to different cities inside of those countries. Oh, you're very welcome, Callie Slime Bucket Witch Lady. Um, dude, having car issues fucking sucks. I've been there, I've been there a lot, and it, yeah, it, it blows. <clears throat> wow. Plus, we took him to Japan, Germany, Italy. Wow, it's funny. That it, was he was he visiting the fucking Axis powers specifically of World War II? He he mentions three the the three countries that he took him to, like either intentionally or by coincidence, were all unified against the um the um allies. That's funny. Plus, we took him to Japan, Germany, and Italy. Uh, he also spent three weeks traveling in Europe. Nice. He's lucky. Yes, he traveled a lot for his age. He can speak French and Japanese. Wow, that's that's actually really impressive, um, especially Japanese, which is like they don't even use the same fucking alphabet. I think it's like a different a different form of written um, 
it's just completely different than learning like any 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 related english or european language that's pretty wild wow he spent nine weeks in japan this past summer a program with 60 other students he learned a lot i bet have you have you seen much of la yet not really there is a lot to see here actually yeah have you been to Santa Monica or Venice beaches, right? This dude keeps fucking, like, referencing. I'm telling you, like, within his music, like, in the fucking 10 songs he has on YouTube or whatever, every album cover is him at a beach. Like, he's always referencing the fucking beach and, like, being in California. And, like, dude, this dude is so heavy on it. No. I'd love to go there. Both of them. They aren't that far from you. Maybe a one-hour drive. Yeah, I can't drive, though. I know. What are your parents doing this weekend? A friend from college died. They are going to the funeral. Uh, sorry to hear that. Where are they going? North Carolina. <laughs> Can you from Westmost? Thank you for the five dollars. Can you do another bong rip? Callie was in the bathroom and missed the first one. She had Del Taco for lunch after her Festiva died. Straight diarrhea. You know, when when your Festiva dies, what way to celebrate then by wrecking your digestive system with bullshit food? So yeah, one sec. You can wreck your digestive system and I'll wreck my lungs. We'll all wreck our, our bodies in different ways. <coughs> oh god i'm gonna have to start hitting my fucking vape pen or something <coughs> between between the the voices and the bog my shit is getting destroyed <coughs> oh martin f what's my lsat my lsat was a 158 which was better than uh 69 percent and or it was better than like 70 percent and like worse than 30 percent basically was where my score was at so it was it, it was like a decent else the lsat's such a fucking bitch jeez dude don't get me started on it <clears throat> wow far do they go out of town much my dad does in sales yes what does he sell drugs law <laughs> what does he sell drugs <laughs> pharmaceuticals or however you spell it you know pharmacy it looks like they they did have a few miss um they they misspelled the cte part but they spelled pharmaceutical they the, the difficult part in the word pharmaceuticals would probably be the f like a, a person who didn't know how to spell it would probably substitute the correct ph for an f because of the f sound um, so it's funny that the decoy, the decoy gets really close to spelling this correctly. And then they straight up say like, or however you spell it, like they can't spell it correctly and then say that. That's funny. Thank you, Jake. Spent countless hours watching your content, man. I love it. Hope for more live stream. Big ups, Fast Eddie. Thank you, dude. Yeah, live streams. Um, there's there's going to be more live streams coming. Like, it's a lot easier to produce content like in a live stream form. And especially like the kind of long form bullshit that I do where they're lengthy videos, you know, like these child log readings are, they can be lengthy. Um, it's so much easier to just do it live and, and not have to worry about the editing and just trying to make it like as listenable as possible while actually performing it, you know? <clears throat> oh yeah. So back to this, um, this, this crazy, uh, close to correct spelling of pharmaceuticals. In sales, yes, what does he sell? Drugs, lol, pharmaceuticals, or however you spell it. I worked in sales too for a while, and marketing too. Drug company? My wife works in the pharmaceutical industry also. Geez, what a lucrative industry that is, right? Um, you know, you can patent a fucking chemical and then sell it for a crazy amount. Yeah, people that work in pharmaceutical um, technology usually do really well for themselves financially. Cool. Kayla, cool. Do you have a do you have a new best friend in school yet? No. Really? That's sad to hear. But you must have some pretty good friends. Wow, I wonder if he's asking to see if there's anyone that he could bring in to to the kind of abuse that he's planning with the decoy. Or I wonder if he's just trying to see like, oh, is this is this person isolated? Like, is there anyone else that they might tell that I might have to worry about? <clears throat> 
So it's uh, the the decoy could have gone with either route. Either the decoy says, "Yeah, I have a friend. She's thirteen. Whatever. We're close." And then he goes, "Oh, well, what about involving her too?" Or the decoy is like, "No, I'm like a loner. Like I don't talk to anyone." I think either way it could have been a viable uh, opportunity going forth. There's a lot of creativity on the point on the part of the decoy. You know, like this is these are dynamic conversations similar to a live stream, right? Like they happen in real time, and it just it is what it is. So it's it's just crazy, you know, to step back and admire the fucking the artistic uh, capacity of the decoys in these chat logs. <clears throat> That's sad to hear, but you must have some pretty good friends. A few, yeah. Do you do many things with them? Sometimes. What do you guys do? Sometimes we go shopping. Sometimes to the movies. We study. Good. Things like that. Do they live close? Yeah. That's good. What kind of students go to your school? What proportion? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's good. What kind of students go to your school? What proportion are uh, what proportion are Caucasian, Mexican, Chinese, Black? That sort of thing. <laughs> oh my god! The fact that he wants to know the fucking demographic uh, makeup of her class is is fucking hilarious. And it's it's of all things like. He doesn't even say Asian. He says specifically Chinese. How would she know? She's like, well, there's 7% um, Chinese. There's 1% Hmong. There's a half percent Vietnamese. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. This dude is, is bizarre. It's mostly white. Okay. I wonder if that was just his way of, of, of asking about the overall affluence of the area. He, he might just be trying to ask about that. Okay, maybe we can call tomorrow. Maybe you can call tomorrow. Yeah, what time? Actually, easier to talk to online. I won't be alone much tomorrow. We'll be with wife. Okay. So it, uh, so, so it would be awkward. I'll have to let you know about Sunday. Okay. If my wife were out, I'd take you around places, but not sure if I can really get away that long, because it's about an hour to get out of there and one to get back. Okay. I'd love to take you here to the beach. He just wants to go to the beach. You know, we've heard that before. You'll love the beaches. Uh, I'd love to take you here to the beach. You'll love the beaches. Awesome. I'm less than 10 blocks from the beach. Well, go there you go. There you go. Guy moves from Philadelphia, 10 blocks from a beach, and then his life is consumed by beaches. That's, that's fucking Stephen G.C. Coates. Wow, nice. Bug your mom and dad to come to Venice in Santa Monica. They're right next to each other. Okay. It's an easy drive. Does brother drive? Yeah. Bug him to take you too. Ha! We don't hang out. He can treat his little sis. Is his friend back in New Mexico or here? Oh yeah, so he's, he's referring to the, um, to the other interests stated by the decoy. <clears throat> here. Have you seen him again recently? No. Did he have fun when he was with you? Yeah. How did your brother react to being together? Or how did your brother react to your being together? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He just repeats it. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. No. I meant he doesn't, not don't. What the fuck? Okay. How will you be sure your bro is out Sunday? He will go to his girlfriend's house Saturday night. All night? Yeah. Wow. Maybe come tomorrow night. Okay. What's address? Hmm. You really going to come? Not sure yet. It would be right. Uh, it would be the right time though. Yeah. Damn. So tempting. Would you want me to? Yeah. Let's talk tomorrow. Okay. I'd like to. Really? Me too. Yes. Let me confirm tomorrow. Okay. Exciting. Do all of those fun things. Yeah, do all of the criminal things that he's talking about. Yeah. Wow, so we're almost... Yeah, so we're almost done with the chat log. We have a few more pages of the chat. Um, and then, of course, after the chat, we will jump into the actual interaction with, with Chris. So where the fuck was I? Okay, right here. Exciting. Do all of those fun things. Yeah. First, just talk. I'll probably be on tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Around 4 to 6 p.m. Okay, I will get into. Uh, okay, I will get into. On. Good. BRB. Okay. And then some time lapses. Just got some good news. 
two of my songs <laughs> just got some good news two of my songs have advanced to the next level in an international songwriting contest <laughs> wow nice yes makes me happy Jeez, I wonder if that was if that was his his disturbingly titled "Always Be Young." I wonder if that's the fucking song that made him. I don't know what fucking contest this was. Nothing ever came of this guy's music career. Pretty much every, like I've already said, every comment on his fucking YouTube channel is someone making an inside TCAP joke. Like every single comment. So if this guy has any musical relevance, it is merely because he was featured on "To Catch a Predator." Like it's pretty hilarious. Westmost just got off. <laughs> Hold on, dude. Just got off the phone with Hanson. He wants you to do two bong rips, one for him and the other for Callie Slime Bucket because he sold her that janky festiva. He was dinking with her head. Um, I'm gonna. I'm out of the weed right now. I actually just smoked the last of that of that bowl, so you're gonna have to give me a second. But hey, you got it, bro. <laughs> he was dinking with her head, and thank you for the ten bucks, man. <clears throat> Joshua Neal, while I'm packing this, gotta go to court this week to deal with the petty possession charge. Can you take a rip for me? Because I'm all out right now. Bro, um, yeah, so this is also why I like emphasize the fact that you should never talk to police. Like some people have gotten pissed in the comments when during interrogations, I'm like, okay, what an idiot. You shouldn't talk to police. They're like, why are you telling predators how to evade getting arrested? No, anyone who's listening like anyone you generally have ne you have nothing to gain by talking to police if you're ever suspected of a crime the best thing you could do is to just say lawyer that's it and then talk to whatever you're fucking whether it's a public defender or what um so yeah dude that sucks that, that you have a possession charge i think that's the most bullshit in my dream job i would be a defense attorney who who defends people who have possession charges that's like my dream scenario where i'm like fighting the man but still like doing what i would consider like meaningful work um yeah that sucks bro that sucks <clears throat> the one sec My lawyer is Blair Burke. <laughs> Blair Burke was uh, fucking Harvey Weinstein's lawyer and uh, Moise Wollen's lawyer. That's funny. That's funny when you could be a lawyer and you're known for representing fucking scumbag clients. <clears throat> okay, so back to this fucking, back to the near conclusion of this chat log. Yeah. First, just talk. Uh, okay, I think I was... Oh yeah, so we're in the middle of this. Perfect. So now we're going to get into what exactly happened with this fucking song contest. Yes, makes me happy. I had one song that was in the semifinals in the UK songwriting contest. Wow, I wonder if I should look this up, this this specific thing to see. I wonder if there's a public record of his performance in this fucking contest. Really? Yes, but there were a lot of semifinalists. Oh, I bet it is good enough to win. I hope so, but the competition is very stiff. He should have said, but both myself and the competition are very stiff. Maybe you can, oh, of course, so he does. He, that's funny. He couldn't, he couldn't help himself. I didn't even see this next line, but the competition is very stiff. Maybe you can make me stiff. That's funny. Um, it took him almost a minute. I'm looking too at the, the amount of time that had elapsed between each message. So like he types out, but the competition is very stiff. And then he's looking at that message and he's like, do I go for it? Do I not? He's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then he goes in, but maybe you could make me stiff. Lol. Yeah, maybe. That would be very easy. Yeah. Very. Cool. I have to get some other things done. Okay. Maybe I'll be on a little later. If I don't see you tonight, then tomorrow p.m. Okay. Kiss face. And then we have, like, weird, angry, like, mischievous face. You too. I want to give you a really big hug when I see you. Bye for now. Bye. January 7th, 2006. Oh, so now we have her. So we have, we have her. Hey, uh. Hi. What are you doing? What are you up to? Getting ready to go to the mall. You can come if you're up for it. Later tonight. Wow, straight to the point. Jeez. 
<clears throat> Waste no time with that shit. What time? If you don't want to, it's okay. Not sure. Maybe 8.30. Okay. 8.30 or 9 is good. Okay. I must be crazy. Why? High risk. <laughs> He knows. This dude knows exactly. See, high risk. And then after after acknowledging that she's 13 and, and making all these specific fucking gross like like depictions of the decoy, he, he's he's finally starting to realize that what he's doing poses substantial risks. So this is like the first time that he's actually it took him to be actually talking about it for him to start getting nervous. Now he's feeling the jitters. <clears throat> From Juicy Pumps, bro headed to the gym for a juicy pump gonna watch the rest when i come back have a good stream man thank you bro have a good workout man um i'm pretty out of shape now i used to love going to the gym like i've, I've said this before though anyone who's like feeling depressed like i i've been hella depressed in my life anyone who's feeling depressed like if you just start exercising the quality of your life will pretty much improve in every way like it's just one of those things as someone who like takes fucking bupropion for depression like someone who takes meds for it like Working out and, and, and fitness can be, like, life-changing shit. Of course, I've, like, totally not working out these days, but um, it's just something that's generally good for life. And thank you for the 10, bro. <clears throat> I'm a, uh, I must be crazy. Why? High risk. Never have done such a thing. You don't have to. I know. How do you feel about it? I would like to see you. Okay, where? Oh, so then she gives the address and it says edited. They're like, don't fucking, don't, don't go to this house. Don't be tempted to go to the fucking steakhouse. <clears throat> you got a cell I can call you on or something? Is somewhere else to meet first. It's the same number as you have. I didn't write it down. And then he gives the number. Cool. What time? Have the other numbers for phone card? Wow. <clears throat> so he's trying to use this like old school way to like call someone anonymously by using this phone card. Um he so he 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 was talking about ways to avoid detection. So he he obviously was a little aware that what he was doing was risky, and he was a little aware that he could be walking into a setup, but um or that he at least needed to take steps to make sure he never got caught doing this but now we're finally starting to see like the actual anxiety manifest itself give them to me again uh he gives the numbers and then he gives the fucking pin to whatever okay eight thirty, nine. okay <laughs> no one else there nope is there somewhere else to meet other than your house? Wow. So again, he, he's nervous. He's nervous about going to the house. I think he just thinks because she's already mentioned her brother that the brother might, might, might pop in for whatever reason. Why? I can't drive, lol. Some place to walk to, right? Or the parents, regardless of what she says, there's a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of danger specifically that comes from these guys going to someone's house when they believe that person's a minor. <clears throat> I can't drive, lol. Some place to walk to? Not really anywhere close. Okay, I'll still reconfirm, okay? Okay, want me to call about 8.15? Yeah, we're getting really close to ending this bitch. Okay, I have to go. Okay. Smiley face. See ya. Yes. Hey. Hi again. What are you doing? Checking on maps. Cool, to my house? Question mark? Yes. Cool. Promise me something. What? Oh my god, this this is weird. Promise me something. What? Ten years from now, you won't think bad of me. What the fuck? That's, it's like he has a guilty conscience about this. That's bizarre. Like, so, so this dude wants to abuse someone who he thinks is a child. And then he also wants to, to skew their perception and then say, also, what I did wasn't even wrong. So this is, this is like, this is, this is, we're venturing into the realm of emotional ma manipulation outside of just being a predator. He's, he's attempting to emotionally manipulate this person into not even believing that they've been abused, even though clearly that's, that's what would have happened had this been an actual, an actual child. <clears throat> so that's really, really disturbing that, um, He's going, he's willing to do this. And then he's also going to try and force them to not even think that what he's done 
to not even acknowledge that what he's done is wrong. <clears throat> DJ B, can you give my girl Rosa a happy birthday? Yes, Rosa, happy birthday. No problem, dude. Of course. <clears throat> I'll hit my vape pen for you, Rosa. Okay, so back to this. <laughs> 10 years from now, you won't think bad of me. Okay, I promise. What kind of car? That was easy. Okay, sure, dude, whatever. What kind of car are you going to be driving? I will watch for you. Okay, Honda. Still call. Okay. <laughs> I may still check it out. Okay. Never have done this before. Lol, me neither. I'm scared shitless. Yeah, so now the anxiety is beginning to wash over him like a fucking rain. He's just like, oh shit, am I really going to do this? <clears throat> do you understand? Yes. So this is... <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> yes. So if this is a setup, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> like that even matters. Like, dude, oh my God, that's hilarious. Oh no, you'll never forgive the person for for bringing you to justice that's ridiculous this guy is an unrepentant predator uh I'll, I'll talk about this later in greater detail when we analyze the fucking song that he wrote but this dude in his mind he has done nothing wrong he believes that he was the victim of a thought crime that he was wrongly accused and wrongly convicted of a crime that wasn't actually a crime that's in his mind he thinks he did nothing wrong so it's crazy that this dude um this dude has the audacity to still think that he's done nothing wrong, and he he then goes on to say, "If this is a setup, I'll never forgive you." Like like he would be able to haunt the fucking decoy out of guilt. Yeah, right, dude. Hey, anyone who's working for perverted justice or anyone who makes TCAP, yeah, I don't feel guilty. I don't think anyone who makes TCAP content feels guilty about memeing the fuck out of these guys. Fuck them, is my opinion. <clears throat> so if this is a setup, I'll never forgive you. Ah, it's not a setup. You don't have to come. I just want you to know how serious it could be if anything goes wrong. Okay. I'm a nice person, dot, dot, dot. Jeez, yeah, right. I believe you. Smiley face. Still call, same time. Okay, I will. Eight one, uh, 815, right? Yes. Wait for me so I can see you in the window. Okay. It's far. How far? Not sure. You check the map? Yes. Okay. When you leaving? Not precisely sure. Maybe 7.15. Okay. Looks like 65 miles. Bring some, bring some of your music. I want to listen to it. Okay, awesome. So the music that this guy shows up with was solicited by the decoy. Okay, I was unsure about that. Um, I mean, it's still fucking... It's still extremely cringe that he brought his shitty music to the Sting House, but... Captain Titus, thank you for this. Nice to see more TCAP from Eddie. Buy a wrap on me. Dude, we will. Uh, my girlfriend and I will definitely probably. We're probably going to go to the dispensary tomorrow. So, dude, we will be getting wraps. I will get one for you. <laughs> I forget the fucking the, the brand that we've got. But no, we will. I want to listen to it. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is this is about to conclude the fucking um, chat log. OK, have to go. OK, I'll call the 815. Talk soon. Yes. All right. So let's get to the video. You know, I get asked all the time, what do these guys have in common? And, and what, what I say as an answer is that the vast majority <laughs> of these guys do not stand out of a crowd. They don't have the word predator tattooed to their forehead. He's walking in like a criminal. His fucking, his hand is just like, like nest, nested inside of his fucking jacket pocket like it's a gun. That's really Hello? sketchy. Hey, <laughs> the red, the red fucking uh, curtain. Okay. What's in the bag? <laughs> oh, nothing really. Good evening, how are you? Yeah, this dude is nervous as balls. His inability to have any kind of actual conversation like... I think it finally hit him at the very end, the the extent that he was risking his life. He was married. So this guy's sneaking away from his wife and he's sneaking away from his family to go meet someone who said they were 13. Like, uh, it, it might have been a lot easier for him to talk about when he was doing it. But like the actual action of doing it, I think, really, really uh, shook him.
Oh. So when he sees Chris, I mean, he goes from bad to worse. Like he's this guy has like a complete fucking meltdown. Why don't you have a seat on the stool there, please? <laughs> okay. Do me a favor. Just take your hands out of your pockets, if you would. Okay. <laughs> so good. The take the take your hands out of your pocket. It it makes these guys think that Chris is law enforcement, and Chris doesn't deny that. Like that's an intentional move. It serves the purpose of making sure that they don't fucking shoot him or stab him. But it's also just a good strategic way to let this person know that you're in charge. He tells him and keep your hands out of your pockets, like. And then he does it. Every predator does it. No predator's like, fuck you. <laughs> that would be hilarious if they're all, fuck you. No, like, it's cold. I'm warming up my hands. Uh, Jake LaRosa, thank you for the $5. Please do, or please do my favorite predator, Ernest Timmy Timmons. You know, I already, this is the second time he's gone up. So um, you're making a good case for it. But like I said, uh, we really need to get to the bottom of this Kevin guy. Kevin has ruined too many lives. Uh, but we'll, we can investigate this further. What's going on? Go ahead, please. Sit. Oh, um, I'm, I'm going I'm to leave. Okay. Well, no, no, I'm going to leave. Think, no, you need to. Yeah, you know, for someone who argues that he does nothing wrong, he actually, um, he awfully comes off as guilty. Trust me, you want to chat for a minute before you do that. Okay, I want to okay. I, I go, please. please. I, I, I don't. What, what are you doing? I want to see what's in your pocket. Oh, this just a CD. Of what? <laughs> This is some songs I have. Songs? <laughs> some songs I had. See, so when you say songs I had, it's like, what? Like, he's not even saying it's his music. Like, come on, dude. Say it's your music. Own it. You have the fucking balls to bring it in. Just own it, dude. Yes. In Stephen Coach, you've got a guy who's got a good job. He's a successful executive. He composes his own music. <laughs> he's made his own CDs. He's got his own website. He has a life. A wife, a son. It never ceases to amaze me how in one part of a guy's life it can be so totally normal, successful, and yet they have this, this secret dark side where they're trolling internet chat rooms uh, for dates with, with teenagers. That shouldn't really surprise too many of us, too. It's like, I mean, there are different there are different faces that we give to different people, you know, like coworkers that you work with, that you meet and that you communicate with in professional settings, the kind of personality that you're going to reveal, like the kind of things that you're going to be willing to disclose and talk about, like it depends. It's very, very much contextual. So the fact that a person who seems outwardly normal, outwardly competent, outwardly friendly, whatever, the fact that they could be a depraved monster on the inside, like I don't think that should surprise anyone in today's day and age. And a lot of the best uh, victimizers have learned how to not appear as victimizers, you know? And what are you doing here, Stephen? Um, I was doing something that I shouldn't be. <laughs> Should yeah. See, once again, awfully guilty for someone who is later arguing that they've done nothing fucking wrong. What is that? Why don't you tell me? <laughs> Sir, I, I just want to go. Chris is wearing the turtleneck of power here. He doesn't even have to look at GSC. And it appears that Chris is holding some kind of photograph. Hopefully that's a photograph that GSC sent of his dick. Okay, please. So he could be like, dude, is this your dick? Is this you? What are you doing here trying to meet a girl who told you she was 13 years old, Stephen? I, I've never done such a thing and I didn't want to do it. And Why I, did you do it then? Because I just, I, I'm stupid. How old are you? Stupid. stupid. Very common. So this is another thing. So instead of acknowledging that what they've done is vile and evil, they say I'm stupid. They blame stupidity rather than being straight up evil. Um, this is an attempt to buy themselves out of the situation. GC is just going to argue like, oh, it was a lapse in judgment, you know, as opposed to being something that he had thought about for days the, the chat log that he had with the decoy endured for days and he was just continually thinking about it and talking about it. So it's ridiculous that he argues that. How old are you? Absolutely, utterly, completely stupid. How old are you? 56. It was more than being stupid. I mean, a stupid person might drive drunk or something. Like, that. that's the crime of a stupid person, right? Like, an actual lapse in judgment. What he's done is far worse. I'm, and I'm stupid and I've never done such a thing. And God, please, please, let me just go. You could tell that his first instinct was to just turn and go and then he thought better of it so we had a chat for a short while yeah because chris chris was like you're gonna want to stay and talk to me and then gc's like oh shit uh, it, it's not it's not a mere coincidence that this guy stuck around to talk to chris like chris they they would say please i want to leave and chris goes i need to talk to you first and they're like fuck and they stay um once again Someone posted in Super Chat earlier and said that they have a drug possession. Like, dude, if someone is ever coming at you um, and you even suspect that they're a cop, like, you could just ask, am I being detained? 
and the the person if they're law enforcement they have to tell you either yes or no so if you're just smoking weed or something or if you have drugs or something and a cop's talking to you and you don't want to talk to them you could ask am i being detained they're either going to detain you there and arrest you or not but um yeah know your rights never talk to cops without a lawyer present uh that's just that's just good sensible advice Anthony Kenwood, $5, live in Alabama. Awesome to finally give back to you. Listening to your channel while driving. Best co-pilot ever. Roll Tide, friend. Bro, thank you. What's it like in Alabama? That's probably hella different. Do I sound like hella Californian? Uh, I'm not sure. I probably do. But no, thank you, dude. Thank you for that. Um, I can imagine. It's probably, hopefully it's a chill drive. Hopefully the weather's not too bad and it's like warm in your car and stuff. Sure. You talk about <clears throat> sexual things like that. Been with any boys or men in a sexy way. He's defeated. Sure. Look at his posture. His 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 shoulders are slouching. He's arching his back. He's not standing up straight. This dude is. He's aware that what he's done is horrible. And instead of really defending himself, he's just trying to trying to make excuses as to why he wasn't really going to do Please. it. I I beg of you. I beg of you. Believe me. I've I've never done such a thing. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm wrong. <laughs> wow. And then we have the fucking uh, Alan Charnay defense, right? So Alan Charnay, the guy with the hella bad back from the Texas thing. Um, Hanson's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm out of my mind. Like, I'm just crazy. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like that that similar to the I'm stupid is just an excuse for behavior. It's like, why are you here? I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. Clearly, this this man does not suffer from a mental illness that impairs his ability to decide right from wrong. Like he's not someone who is legally crazy. This is once again just an excuse to explain away his disturbing behavior. I just want to leave. I just want to have this just go. OK, please. Please, this I is a pretty you. sexually charged conversation for somebody your age to have. And he's making he's making these wild fucking hand movements. It's pretty funny. Um, GC is is expressing himself vividly with nonverbal communication. He's waving his two arms in front of his face, like I wasn't gonna do anything. Like really, this dude's probably sweating, and his the quality of this is pretty poor. But if we had like high resolution footage, we'd probably see him drenched in sweat and like shaking and shit. Somebody who and, says they're 13. And, and please, sir, please. I know, and I just, I don't want it to, uh, I want it to end. I really want it to end. I, I just want it to end. <laughs> Well, there's there's a couple things you need to know. Oh my God! See these dudes? They don't know their rights. Someone posted like learning your rights. Like, dude, it's so important. It's so important to know your fucking rights. I mean, it's funny that these guys were railroaded, and and we get to have this like lengthy footage. But fuck. One is I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet children on the internet. Now, oh, he does the Schumacher. Can do to make you he does the Schumacher. I want to see the moment. NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to. And this is the moment America. when Stephen G. C. Coates's life fell apart. He'd worked. He had gotten his bachelor's degree, and then he got a master's degree. Uh, this this takes about seven years of time. So this guy spends about seven years in school, in college, and then goes on to get a pretty good high paying job. Chris mentioned that he was an executive of some kind and he he he's a founder in some kind of tech company. The area that he lives is expensive as fuck. The Santa Monica LA shit that is expensive as fuck. Like California is an expensive state to live in. I would fucking know. I've been here my whole life. Like the the region that he's in is particularly expensive even in an expensive state. So this dude must have had a lot of money and uh it was it was on this day that his entire life <laughs> collapsed to shit around him. Now, there's, no, there's nothing I can do to make you stay here, but if there's anything else you'd like to say, we'd like to hear it. And then he leaves to try to avoid being on camera anymore. And as he gets to the end of the driveway, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department is there. And this is when he really starts to come unglued. Please, I beg of you. Please, I beg of you. You beg of me what? Just let me go, please. Yeah. Please let me go. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm very serious. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'll I'm, tell you I've what. I've never done such a thing in my life. I never want to do it again. I'm just... I just want to go, okay? Please. Since you're the first person to say that today, we'll let you go. Right, I'm a good guy. <laughs> See, the, the cop is trolling the fuck out of him. But like on a real note, like cops can lie to you. It is perfectly legal for a cop to lie to you. A cop can can arrest you if you're arrested with your partner or something. You're arrested with a group of people. That cop can uh, a, a detective could be like your 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 friends already rolled on you. Your friends already threw you under the bus. You're facing fucking five years for possession, whatever. Like cops can say whatever the fuck they want to say to you. It's funny that um you know it it is it is this cop trolling the fuck out of this guy that teaches 
teaches the lesson. But yeah, this is a real lesson. Uh, cops can lie to you, and it's perfectly fine. Not. You know, I've got a good job. I hadn't done anything yet, you know. But the reality is, the chat, the fact that they showed up, you know, that's a crime, right? Right, so, and then Chris is talking specifically, so these guys who get caught up on TCAP, like, they're not charged with actual abuse or with actual molestation. They're charged with attempted crimes. And in order to be found guilty of an attempted lewd act with a minor, you have to talk about the crime, and then you have to make a direct step, a, a direct but ineffectual step towards the completion of the crime. So Stephen goes on to argue that he was convicted of a thought crime, that he merely talked about it, um, and, and, and that he's been railroaded. But in order to be found guilty of, an, of attempting a lewd act with a minor, which is what he was charged with, all you have to do is talk about it and then make a, a direct but ineffectual step. So him showing up to the house was the second nail in the coffin, right? The two things. You have to talk about doing it and then you have to try but fail to actually do it. So him, him showing up was the second nail in, in that charge's coffin. There, <clears throat> in the eyes of the police. Well, I've read all your text messages that you've had with this young female, all right? Hey, so have we, uh, us along with this bald cop, this hilarious dude. <laughs> This cop might be like one of the funniest fucking um, figures. I think that there's a particular line this guy has that fucking never fails to amuse me. That's what this all is. All right. And you repeat several times. Erase our conversations. You know, I can get a lot of trouble with this. So you knew exactly what you were doing. Well, and in and, and GC's defense, what he could have said was, well, I'm married. I didn't want my wife to find out I was cheating on her. I mean, that's what I would say if I was GC's defense lawyer. And I, I mean, I never would be his defense lawyer. But, um, you know, it's it's funny that he's not going to cop to that. Yes, that's right. right. There's no doubt in my <laughs> yes, mind that's right. you sees this. You knew exactly what you were doing. All right. But that didn't mean I was going to actually do it. Sitting on your computer at home and uh, enjoying the, 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 the play, talking. Is one thing, <clears throat> all right? Showing up at her house is a clear indication that your intent was to complete those exactly, three exactly three acts you talked about. And so the whole point of this guy is like, oh, I've been convicted of a thought crime. It's like, bro, you showed up, you showed up, and therefore made yourself guilty of attempting the crime. Had you merely talked about it, there will be another case that I'll be um, talking about like a, a recent case that um, we can go over when we look at his shitty fucking thought crime song. But um, yeah, it was him showing up that, that was the reason that he's in handcuffs right here. But I, Anal sex, vaginal <laughs> sex, and all the sex no, no, with no, the girl. No, 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 I never said anything about having vaginal sex. Oh, yes, you did. Well, I have to, you guys still like, some people don't like it when I rewind, but I have to see that part vaginal again. Vaginal sex, and all <laughs> Oh, yes, you did. That's like no, the funniest no, no, shit. No, 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 no. I never said anything about having vaginal sex. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> oh, well, yes, you did. Let me put it okay, and so to go back, we just read, like, he did say things about vaginal sex. He he may he may go on to argue, well, I talked about it. I spoke of vaginal sex, but I never talked about committing to vaginal sex with a decoy. But no, he talked about vaginal sex. Vaginal sex was a topic of discussion that he engaged in with the decoy. And then he went on to say, oh, uh, if, if I fuck you in the ass, then you'll still be a virgin. So in a roundabout way, in that sentence alone, he's like, he's, he's talking about vaginal sex, aside from just, from just asking what she's done and if she's wet and all that. This way, whatever, I mean, you know how it is online. You talk to people you don't know who you're talking to and- Like what is, he talked about it in a broad sense. He absolutely talked about vaginal sex. <clears throat> uh, thank you from Courtney Sharp. Thank you for the ten dollars so glad you're streaming love all of your content thanks for so many hours of entertainment hey you're welcome i've also noticed too like these streams they go for a significantly longer time than than my videos do um which i guess i'm i'm like perfectly fine with that like put this on as like background asmr or whatever but like yeah no it's really fun to do these long form like streams like this it's a lot more interactive and it's just easier to cover like like more predators you know it just he was in control of his life up until that very moment and he couldn't control the fact that he was going to be on television and he couldn't control his horny levels <laughs> the fact that he was going to be arrested and that i think freaked him out what do you think was going to happen 
I thought she was going to ask me to take her for a ride to get a burger. I would have got. I would have talked to her oh, a little please. bit. They never spoke about getting a ride to go get a burger at all. That was never mentioned. They might have talked about that over the phone. I highly doubt that, especially given the explicit graphic nature of the chat. But um, for him to to argue that that is a completely biased opinion, pretty much no like objective person who is tasked to find the truth of that statement would believe him. It's clear, given the context, that he had sexual intent. He's gotten a sense Nobody's going to be home. Nobody's going to see us. Your brother's going to be gone. Exactly. Your parents are going to be gone. Exactly. I just told you. I just read this. All right? I know, but that doesn't mean I would actually do it. There's so much fantasy online that... Well, you should have kept... So now we have the seeds of what would become an, uh, a huge aspect of this guy's artistic fucking uh, artistic creation. Like, he's already saying, like, there's so much room. Like, I wasn't going to do it. He's hinting at this idea that he's been convicted of a thought crime. Can I your house? That wouldn't, know, that wouldn't have been an I issue. Know, I know, and that's once why... You, I... Once you've crossed the line, you cross. The fantasy is no longer an issue as yeah. far as fantasy online. It's, it's a... And in a legal sense, him showing up to the house was what was what initiated the crime. It's what made it a crime. Had he just simply had the conversation and never showed up, it would have been a lot more difficult for him to be convicted of attempting the crime. Um, I mean, some, some, it, it depends on the county in order to assess like how likely it would be to charge a guy just based on the conversation alone. But what is un, what is what is not up to dispute is that talking about sex and then showing up to a house constitutes intent that's that's that meets the legal criteria for attempting a crime the mixture of things <clears throat> all of them tragic if in fact a 13 year old girl had been there and there had been uh, a sexual relationship that's going to damage that child for the rest of his or her life yeah but at the same time you know here's a guy whose family is going to get this news whose wife is going to say what whose kids are going to say what <laughs> what and that is they're going to say equal. what no way it's tragic i think wow okay so we have the end of that so now let's look at the um fucking hilarious chat log or, i'm sorry the hilarious song that this guy wrote <clears throat> mm. Okay, there's a few super chats I missed too. Okay, do I got to send you money to tell you how much, how much O R N spam you have in your chat? Um, uh, is there a lot of spam? I didn't know that. I haven't. It's been really difficult. Like I've been trying to like look at the um screen and like read the chat log more. If there's a lot of spam, then I'll definitely consider getting a mod because that is whack. Like I'm fine with people saying whatever they want, but if it's just straight up spam, like that's fucking annoying. Um. So I guess, unfortunately, like, in order for me to recognize it, like, these super chats are highlighted and it's easy for me to see them. But, um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. And then thank you to G Sybil for the $5. I appreciate that as well. <clears throat> so now, this, I would play the actual song. This song is called Thought Crime, performed by Stephen G.C. Coates. There's a link to it in the bottom. I implore you to listen to it. It's pretty fucking shitty, um, but you should just hear it to actually like like get a sense of what the song sounds like. But this is the description that was written by GC himself, by Stephen Coates himself, regarding this song. Thought crime is a scary concept, like that portrayed in the movie Minority Report. The internet put us that much closer. So thought crime, of course, is the idea that you're being convicted or you're, you're guilty of thinking something bad. It was first, it was, I think, created by George Orwell in his book 1984, like written in the 40s or some shit about totalitarianism. And the idea was like there was a totalitarian society and you could be found guilty for simply thinking something that was against the rules. So like you could be found guilty of a thought crime because no one knows what thoughts you have. Regardless of how well you think you know a person, like, all of our thoughts are personal. We, no one, no other human being knows the thoughts that each of us have, you know? And um, therefore, they're considered like something that are kind of sacred in a way, you know? So like to be found guilty of thinking something is, is the grounds for like this crazy dystopian novel. He was not guilty of a thought crime. There, there are worlds of difference between uh, the Orwellian thought crime that was written in the 40s and then the fucking, uh, the laughable fucking thought crime that is purported by GC. But um, yeah, we'll go into that in a second. <clears throat> 
Oh shit. Shout out to the skip tracer. Thank you for the five dollars. I did a video on his Twitter likes recently. He still can't control his horny levels. Thank you. Once again, another excellent channel uh here that you should check out if you if you like my content, the skip tracer. Dude, I watched your video and it was hilarious. Your the way that you delivered it was hilarious. The Twitter video, it was really funny. Uh, aside from being informative, I thought it was like like the deadpan humor was on point. And yeah, dude, he so this is what i mean this guy is a public figure as a musician he's like he's still trying to to be recognized for his shitty music so he keeps a public twitter and although he posts skip tracer mentions this in his video he posts like generally wholesome shit he posts like some political shit i think he's like he's he's a progressive or a leftist or or, or a democrat at least because he's posting like kind of like pro like democratic shit like anti-republican shit that's his political slant so he posts that stuff but then he also posts like random wholesome stuff but then if you look at his likes he's liking all kinds of like straight sexual shit twitter allows like pornography and this dude is like liking all kinds of like one of them is about blowjobs or something and like uh he, he liked another thing that was like worship the booty like love the booty but yeah no this dude um this dude very much uh, is a public figure or he at least wants to be a public figure <clears throat> And he's also okay with liking blatantly sexual things on his on his public his public Twitter account. Okay, thank you to Rasta Sauce. Let's go. I'm finally able to catch one of these streams live. Your vids have an incredible blend of humor and intellectual analysis. Thank you, man. That's like exactly the kind of tightrope that I'm trying to walk. Uh, I don't script these. I don't. Um, I I used I still script out like like what I type in the fucking bio, like for the video, but I'm pretty much just making these up as I go. So like the live stream format still works, you know, whether I'm recording it offline and uploading it, like either what we're doing it live, I'm just going off the cuff. But um, yeah, at the same time, like I'm, I'm just like a dude who's smoking weed, you know, I'm just a dude who's smoking massive amounts of weed and like talking shit on predators. <laughs> I mean, I went to school and got a bachelor's degree in communication studies. So whatever amount that adds to credibility, like it adds. But um, at the end of the day, like this is not like hella serious Jim Kent swim stuff, you know. <clears throat> but thank you for that. Oh, okay. Another from G Sibyl. Please consider trial coverage. Second channel, maybe. Love your content, man. Thank you. Yeah, there, there are a lot. You know what is really interesting? The G Lane Maxwell trial. Unfortunately, that one is not being um, publicized. But man, the Jeffrey Epstein, um, G Lane Maxwell stuff. Geez, that is like that is like ripe for for some fucking coverage like that needs to be talked about more people should be understanding and knowing what's going on there because a lot of high profile people are being accused of very serious crimes <clears throat> okay so yeah so oh and instead of acknowledging orwell since thought crime is like something out of orwell he talks about minority report which is like the fucking 2000s movie with tom cruise where you could be found guilty of doing something before you do it in minority report in minority report there was like it's futuristic and there's like these robots or androids that can like tell when people it's 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 a sci-fi movie and it's funny that he mentions that instead of orwell for um for giving the context of the song so here we have the lyrics I would play the song, but this dude is like super happy with the um, DMCA strike, uh, the DMCA takedowns too. So he would probably file some bullshit against me to get my um, to get the stream canceled if I played like even a second of it. Okay, before I end, from Westmost, five dollars. Thanks for the stream. I gotta go. Still waiting on that collab we planned back when you had under a hundred subs before you blew up. Another rip for Cali. Absolutely, Wes. Let's do it. Let's do it, dude. We've talked on Discord. I know. I never got around to doing it my apologies but um yeah let's do it i'll talk to you on discord and and we can we can get it because this is i've also been thinking about kind of like talking with other content creators in the tcap realm to like figure out like how they do it like the, the programs i don't know i just think it'd be cool to have like like kind of like more dialogues between um tcap tcap content creators and i think that these kind of live streams are an accessible and easy way to kind of do that so like yeah no that's i'm actually down for that and then, yeah, one sec, hold on. Oh, then. <coughs> Five dollars from Synthros, love your content. Thank you, man. Hold on. So we still have, we haven't got to the lyrics, but one moment. Okay, wait, one more. Can you be more immersive with the chat and talk to us without donating? I will be able to once I once I run through this. It's like really difficult to like try and like 
like make sure that I'm not pausing. Um, the reason that I stopped with the bot was because people said that it interrupted from like the experience, and like, yeah, um, it would be easier to um do once I was once I was like done talking about the predator. I'll be able to just like look at the chat. But yeah, no, I'll stick around once we're done. I'll totally do that. So let's get back to the lyrics. <clears throat> Thought crime, <laughs> spies are listening. Thought crime to what you're typing. Thought crime, paranoia sting. Be careful what you say. Thought crime, written evidence. Thought crime, may twist common sense. Thought crime, police make you tense. Be careful what you say. Fantasy in the wrong hands may jail you if you make plans. Role play you could be used might be misconstrued as thought crime. It could be the press, right? So if it wasn't clear that this was about fucking his appearance on TCAP, then like he straight up says in his fucking shitty song, it could be the press. In his case, it was the press. Thought crime. Cause your life distress. Thought crime. And they could care less. Be careful what you say. Fantasy in the wrong hands may jail you if you make plans. Role play you could be used. Uh, one sec might get you accused of thought crime you can't walk away thought crime no matter what you say thought crime damage done today be careful what you say be careful what you say you might be accused of thought crime right so the fact that he talked about it was not why he was convicted of attempting to commit lewd acts with a minor it was not merely that he was talking about it it was his showing up to the house this whole thought crime thing, this whole thought crime argument would be a much stronger argument had it merely been a chat, had he merely talked about doing it and then never left his home. Then he would have the right to say, okay, well, you're convicting me merely on what I said. A different discussion can be had over whether simply saying you're going to do something counts as intent or not. That's that there 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 could be an actual discussion that that can occur there. And as a as a supporter of free speech, as someone who takes the First Amendment very seriously, and as someone who takes free speech very seriously, uh, I think that 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 we have to we have to recognize the ability to say whatever you want as being sacred and impede upon that as as little as possible in order to have like a free country i think you have to be able to basically say whatever the fuck you want to say <clears throat> however the debate over whether saying you're going to do something and then showing up to do it like that's a much a much easier one it's like yeah dude you made a step towards the completion of the crime you've met the legal burden of proof and as far as like the common sense interpretation of like planning to do something a reasonable person would probably say okay dude you had this sexual conversation you showed up to the house it is reasonable to assume that you probably would have done the act and if probably suffices then then that would be enough to even convict him on a moral level as well. It said the rhyming is killing me. Yeah, that's funny. Uh yeah, the rhyming is like some like junior high rap shit. It's it's kind of hilarious that he made these that he's made these fucking shitty little rhyming songs that he did. Free speech is one thing, but the convo is a crime. Yeah, um and I take free speech really seriously. Uh it's something that uniquely makes america um that this is cheesy and cliche but that uniquely makes america kind of a cool country that we have the ability to at least say um without making like crazy threats like saying i'm gonna kill the president or whatever crazy shit like without saying in a video game without saying crazy things like that um you know people can basically say whatever they want um i don't think a grammy award is in the cards yeah i don't think a grammy award is in the cards either like i said i implore you to listen to this guy's fucking music because it's it's pretty garbage it sounds like 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 walmart like tom petty i don't even know but it sounds it sounds pretty fucking pretty shitty <clears throat> tennyson here <laughs> um yeah, exactly. Okay, so Script Tracer just said, a little girl says she's 12 or 13. Conversation over. Exactly. Exactly. It's that simple. It's that simple. And if you really were concerned, contact the ISP. Contact uh, the internet provider. Contact, contact someone and then leave it at that. These guys who engage in the conversations with someone who says they're a minor, it's like, dude, the, the, the criteria for legal guilt is very different 
than the criteria for moral guilt. Like even even having the sexual conversation with someone who identifies as a minor is wrong on a moral level. I think anyone would acknowledge that. Whether it's criminal, that's a different conversation. Whether having a merely whether just talking about it, that that is a, entirely different because we have to restrain the ability of the state to prosecute people at will. Uh, as someone who wants to be a defense attorney, I take free speech seriously. I also take civil liberties seriously, which is why I say like, uh, ask for an attorney if you're ever confronted by police. If you're ever, uh, if, if you're ever confronted by police, ask if you're being detained. If you are, ask for an attorney. Like these are basic things that people should should be able to to do for their own benefit. Because even you don't have to be guilty of a crime to be guilty of a crime. That's the reality of our justice system is that it's imperfect. There are innocent people who are sitting in concrete boxes right now because their lawyer was incompetent, because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everyone should know their rights and everyone should act. They say like drive defensively. Like how about you fucking law defensively? Like be defensive about your rights. <laughs> AK in Minecraft. Yeah, that's funny. So you notice that when I said like, um, anytime you say like, kill the president in Minecraft, it's that's another like uh, a funny legal thing. It's like, oh, I said I was gonna kill you. It's like you say I'm gonna kill you in Minecraft. Like you could, you could, you could, uh, you could hide the intent of what you're saying by just claiming you're gonna do it in a video game. That's like a hilarious. I'm not actually sure whether that would hold up in court. I don't know if that is like something that's actually been tested in a court of law. If you're like, I'm gonna fucking kill you in Minecraft. You're like, I'm gonna fucking blow your head off in a video game. Like size 18 font for I'm gonna kill you and like size five font for in a, in Minecraft. <laughs> um edward console hey cool name bro hey eddie love your content it's 5 a.m but i am happy to see your live damn where are you at you must be on the other side of the world dude it is um 706 here here hey here in california uh the state that i that i inhabit with fucking Stephen gc coats no dude it's only it's like 7 7 p.m here okay so i have a super chat too you're the man, Eddie. Thank you for the ten dollars from Chris K. You're the man, Eddie. One of the elites in the TCAP community. Have some pennies, my good sir. Keep up the wicked work, bud. Bro, thank you. Um, I appreciate all the donations, you guys. Um, like, but at the same time, like, I totally don't expect them. Like, I would be, I would be making this content like if no one was donating. I wouldn't ask to like. I don't ask anyone for anything. Um, I don't ask for subscriptions or likes or whatever. Like, you do you. If you think that I deserve a like or a sub or whatever, like go for it and i appreciate it if you do but like um that's just the the personal style the personal approach that i've taken for this <clears throat> and and i appreciate all of it like i'm just glad that you guys are even down to like hang out you know to hang out on this fucking on on, on what is for me a chill saturday saturday night but what is obviously for others like five in the morning <clears throat> <laughs> yell at me that's funny well yell at me why don't you edward console you're from romania dude hey that's funny that's where i set my vpn sometimes i use it to where my uh the, like the internet thinks that i'm um from fucking romania that's funny wow thank you yeah no problem dude for calling it your name um okay here we have st michael's tcap channel eddie have you looked at his twitter i have not well i i have looked at his twitter and as as we already talked about skip tracer who's here in the chat too skip tracer made a video like specifically looking at this guy's twitter account so like um yeah i watch in skip tracer's video he goes over the entirety of of this guy like i said and like skip tracer said in his video like he has this outward kind of semi-professional a little opinionated but still overall professional presentation but then behind the scenes like like underneath he's liking worship the booty and like he's liking straight up pornographic material which in and of themselves like there's nothing wrong with that like whatever the fuck you want to like on twitter but like for this guy as someone who is a registered sex offender it's 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 a lot more disturbing it's a lot more disturbing to see them kind of engaging in this kind of explicit overt sexual behavior DJ B, I listen to you at work all the time. Bro, I have been there, man. Um, like a dude, I've talked about this before. I worked at a, like a fucking restaurant, um, a pizza place specifically for like five years. I'm in my early 30s and like, man, yeah, dude, listening to stuff, I would like listen to like podcasts or like debates or like music or whatever, but like it could be it could be brutal. Like listening to stuff makes a shift at work go by so fucking easier. And like if you would have told me 
then when I was working there at that pizza place that like someday I, I would be able to make videos on YouTube. Like it would have, it, it would have just like, I would have been like, no way, like no way. I wouldn't even have believed like that this was possible, you know? And I'm extremely grateful to everyone who's made this possible, right? For me to like get ripped as fuck and like smoke and like have a live stream about a fucking registered sex offender from like fucking almost like 20 years ago. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's awesome, man. So I'm glad that you'll see me at work, dude. I'm glad. I hope that that these kinds of like videos and these live streams like make the shift go by a little smoother. <clears throat> and then Justin Edzi. I've gotten hours of entertainment off your videos. Here's a donation for your future education, law school, whatever happens. Thank you, man. Yeah, law school is going to be a bitch and a half to fund like really expensive. Um, Pretty much any school, any law school that you're going to go to is going to have like thirty or $40,000 tuition per year. And it's three years in order to complete the education. So I already have a cool amount of student debt um, from just my bachelor's degree. And I split, like I did my first two years, I got an associate's degree at a community college. Like I saved hell of money. Community college is fucking great. Highly recommend that too, especially for students who are, who are broke as fuck and who come from poor ass families like I did. <clears throat> Uh, yeah tracer did a good video on the predator poacher as well oh, i haven't seen that but i'm definitely going to check that out after and then someone said i love your channel ed i'm not gay or anything i'm just saying <laughs> that's funny uh no it was not pizza planet the smalls were not almost as big as the large at the pizza place i worked at the smalls were distinctly smaller than the large and by the way from working at that fucking pizza place like i'll never forget how to cut pizzas i could still fucking tell you the specific uh amount of slices like per per pizza size pizza size you're in your 30s i definitely thought you were 21 23 you sound younger to me yeah i get that a lot i also look really young like when i um i don't really drink but like when i drank like i would always get carded especially when i was like in my early 20s like i would always get carded I'd always fucking get carded but um i think aside from sounding young i also probably look really young um tough drive <laughs> uh what is this? Hold on. I don't, I don't get it. to the younger guys. Be careful with the women. A vengeful one can claim near anything. Um, yeah, I mean like, like true, but like, I think if generally I don't, I don't see women like running around, like abusing that. Um, but at the same time, a person, all it takes is one accusation. This is once again, why I'm saying like, know your fucking rights, dude. Like, I don't know what you're getting at. Like, that's kind of random. I don't know if anyone, if you're having a conversation with someone or if that's just unsolicited advice, but like, that is the reality. Um, a person can just accuse you of a crime. And then once you're accused of the crime, it is at the discretion of law enforcement as to whether they're going to they're gonna decide that they think you did it. And if they think you did it, you're going to court and then the fucking games begin. So the world that we live in, um, the state is an imperfect tool, right? The justice system is an imperfect tool. And there are many times, uh, I don't know about many times, but there are times when they, they get it wrong. Even Brock 499, love your style, man. Sharp and loose at the same time. Classic blend. Cheers for all the enjoyment. Thank you, dude. Um, so that's that's also part of it. Um, yeah, like aside from doing these, like I, I'd like to think that I elevate the content like a little bit to at least provide like a little bit of actual like perspective, like a little bit of academic insight, you know. But at the same time, like I'm also just a dude that's like smoking mad weed and like like talking shit on these guys, you know. Like I'm not. Um, I try really hard to like be a real person, you know. This is like I'm I'm just like a regular dude like smoking weed, talking shit here. Um, and 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 I don't want to lose track of that, you know. I embrace it. And then when I was in school, like the 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 community college that i went to like i was a competitive speaker i was like on the speech and debate team i would like travel the state like giving speeches like so i i i got into like speaking you know like i was i basically became like um trained to just like give speeches like on command and like the event that i enjoyed the most and the event that i did um the best in was like you would just make speeches up like you'd go to the room you'd get a piece of paper and you'd have like 30 seconds to make up like a seven minute speech like it like that was the name of the game the name of the game was that you never knew what you were gonna have to talk about and that you would only find out like like that that moment and you'd have like 30 seconds whatever to to create a speech but um yeah i liked it it was just like it was like super fresh and that's also kind of what's cool about live streams like um 
making live streams it's like from a content creator perspective it's almost kind of risky like anyone could say whatever they want um a person and like if if they especially like when i had that bot i disabled it this stream but like when i had that bot they would read the super chats out like someone could have trolled the fuck out of me someone could now that i've mentioned it but like there's always a possibility for people to troll the fuck out of you and um you just make it public you know it's a lot it's a lot easier um to to control the kind of dialogue that's being shaped around your content if you only release like uploads when you do things live like people say what they want and like it's out there it's attached to the video you know um so it it it's it's i don't want to say riskier but it just it's uh more intense i guess you know like the stakes are a bit higher than when you're just like when you're just fucking recording something offline how long did it take you to get your associate from community college do you think it was easier to transfer than if you applied straight out of school Yes, in my case, that absolutely was easier because the uh, I barely graduated high school. I shouldn't have graduated high school. I was a dismal student. I, I graduated with less than a 2.0. I'm not exaggerating, like, like failed I like 14 or 15 classes. I, I took summer school and night school every semester. Um, I didn't give a fuck about school. I didn't give a shit. So yeah, my, my, my GPA was dismal. Uh, I can't imagine any university that would have accepted me right out of high school, but I went to a junior college. Of course, junior colleges are far more accommodating of people with poor track records. So I went to a junior college. Um, I was at the junior college for a long time. I don't, I don't even know specifically because like I would take large breaks in between. Like I would do like a few classes one semester and then like stop. And then I don't know, like, dude, I worked like at a shitty job. And like, I just thought that was it. Like I, I couldn't even imagine. I think I was also just really depressed and like, I wasn't taking meds then. And like, I couldn't imagine myself with like a life that was better than what I had. Like school seemed like, like where I'm at now seemed like it was so far, like it was unreal. Like it's, it's, I guess, I don't know. It's like, it's really negative, I guess, but it just seemed like so far away, like actually completing school. I just didn't really take it seriously at first. But then when I finally made it to junior college and like, joined the debate team i was like oh shit this is really fun and then i took that seriously and then um yeah once i transferred to the university like i i did much better academically i focused on keeping a high gpa and then um graduated with like a 3.9 from my university i got one a minus in the last semester well i two a minus another teacher tried to give me an a minus and i like i i talked about this before and i like met with them after the class and i was like dude i'm gonna i'm gonna fight this and like he changed it to an a an entirely different story i've talked about a few times um it was a philosophy class and like the professor uh gave me an a minus i didn't think i i deserved an a minus and I, after the grade was given, spoke to him about that. And I was like, what, why did you give me? I specifically had him uh, I look at the work before I submitted it to review it. And I was like, hey, can you, I, I framed it saying like, hey, can you make sure I'm on the right track? Which is basically saying like, make sure this is good work. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't think that I deserved it. Grade, the, the distribution and the giving of grades is completely subjective, right? I mean, especially for an essay, like a, 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 an 87% or an 89%, like these are subjective calls. And yeah, this fucking philosophy professor, um, I met with him after, after the semester, he was the chair of the department, the philosophy department. And I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to contest this. I basically, I didn't say that it was a long conversation that we had. Um, I was really, I walked in there very confident. He was extremely nervous. I could tell he had trouble looking me in the eyes and I walked in there confident as fuck like uh i used my 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 debate and speech like uh future lawyer shit i like strutted in there and was like hey how's it going let's let's talk bro i'm pretty uh unsatisfied with this grade i i don't think i deserved it um, i made my case as to why i deserved an a and i basically implied that i would be uh, I would I would file a formal appeal against him. And I think that he knew based on the quality of my work how serious I would take it. I took his class very seriously. I took the reading seriously I, and I took the the essay writing very seriously. And this dude knew and he was like, "Fuck, uh this this student is going to make my life difficult." And I I told him I was like, "Dude, uh I basically implied and said, "I will make your life very difficult if you don't just give me the A. Just give me the A and I'm gone. I disappear. I guess looking back, it's a little fucked up or coercive or whatever, but um, you know, I did what I needed to do to secure a very high GPA for my university because law schools are extremely fucking competitive.
<clears throat> okay, so from Esokis, $5. Much to say, but basically you're making it with a similar story to me, and it's inspiring and gives me hope that an idiot like me can too. God uh, bless and love. Thank you. No, dude, exactly. Like, that's what I mean. Like, my life was so different, and it was so difficult to imagine, like, circumstances that were better than the ones that I lived in. I think that one of the aspects of my depression, I don't know how other, if other people can relate to this, but it was just like, like I was really pessimistic. Um, it, it, it stemmed more from, or it stemmed beyond simply being a glass half empty person. Like, like, I think that my, my depression made that like a, a part of my personality to where I was just extremely negative and I thought everything was pointless and meaningless and it didn't matter. And like, I, I couldn't even imagine a life that was better. But I think that for people that are in similar boats, like just finding something that you enjoy doing and doing it can be one of the, the most um, effective ways to remedy that kind of negative rut, that kind of negative thought process that many of us can find ourselves in. <clears throat> okay, first time sending Super Chat. Thanks, man, for replying on previous vid regarding depression. Just enjoy all the humor and honesty. Interested in debate, trial, and philosophy content too. Yeah, someone um, wanted to to know what the LSAT is like. I think I'll probably make a video on the LSAT. The LSAT is the law, uh, or the law school admissions test. Like, it's a it's the most difficult shit I ever did. It's fucking crazy. Um, and if anyone wants to take the LSAT, I strongly recommend you like start studying like now. Don't put it off. Just start studying fucking now. Someone said Eddie's far from an idiot, though. Um, no, dude, you guys are not seeing me at my best. <laughs> you guys are not seeing me at my best and brightest. Like I said, like, I'm, I'm getting high as fuck and, like, just, like, talking out of my ass. Like, this is all pretty raw. It's kind of crazy, too, how, like, someone in a different video commented and talked hella shit and, like, basically tried to analyze me and they were like, you're such a bully and you're so mean to the predators and you're so hard on them that I actually feel bad for them. And, like, th this person went on to be like, you're probably abusive and you probably are a bully and like it was just so fascinating that like this person based off of one small aspect of my life based off of the the videos that i upload as fast Eddie, they they thought that they had enough evidence to make this like broad sweeping assessment of my character um it was pretty funny right because like I make assessments of character based off of the actions that predators make. Like, and all of us agree. You show up, uh, you talk to the minor about the sex, you show up, you're a fucking scumbag. You're a scumbag, you deserve all the humiliation. Most of us who are here right now can all probably agree to that. Um, and that's, that's the way that it should be. <clears throat> Duncan P just got here. Not sure if someone explained yet. Pixeline is a song about a young teen girl that fights crime. Love you, Eddie. No shit. Pixeline is this are you serious, bro? That is fucking crazy. Pixeline is a song about Oh my god. Steely Dan. Wow. Um I didn't know that. Our mana boost squeezes off 20 tracer rounds. What the fuck? Born in the bogs of Jersey, trained on how to spy. Out. What the shit? Ultra teen. Okay, I think here here we go. So, pixeline, be good, my three times perfect ultra teen. Huh? Just a girl in girly trouble. That is fucking bizarre. Oh my god, pixeline, rave on my sleek and soulful cyber queen. Pixeline. Jeez. Yeah, and then so so Pixeline, be good, my three times perfect ultra teen. This fucking guy, this GC guy, is so disgusting. Like one of his songs is is called Always Be Young. This guy's a registered sex offender who was featured on To Catch a Predator for trying to solicit a 13-year-old. And then he has the audacity to publish a song called Always Be Young. Really? And then thank you for this, Duncan, because now we're saying that even his fucking screen name is like a reference to, to a young teen girl. That is extremely disturbing. <clears throat> and DJ B, I heard... Thank you for all your donations, bro. Uh, I, I appreciate this a lot, man. I've seen you donate a lot. Thank you. Um, I heard on meds you were on... And I was on Sim until I had to, dude. Um, so Bupropion, 
I have taken Kratom a few times. And like before I take or before I took Kratom for the first time, I like had to look up how it would interact with Kratom. Um, and some people who take Kratom, which is like a it's it's a drug, it's it's crushed leaves of a plant that have a psychoactive effect. It's basically a drug that is related to coffee. It's not like exactly like coffee. It doesn't have that same kind of direct caffeinated stimulant effect, but it's like in, in low doses, it acts as a mild stimulant and in higher doses as a mild opiate. People take it for pain, whatever, and people just take it to feel high. And like before I took it, yeah, I was, I was pretty sketched out. I had to look up how it would, um, how it would affect me. I also had a friend who took bupropion and they had a really negative reaction. They stopped taking it. They had a, they had like a really weird, um, like a nerve, a nerve reaction to it. Yeah. I, I feel really fortunate that bupropion works for me. Although it sucks. Like I, I, I fuck up my doses all the time. Like, geez, it's probably fucking up my brain chemistry. Like as many times as I skip doses and shit. <clears throat> Oh yeah, exactly. Um, some so Wesley Thompson said it. Oh yeah, good old Mitragyna speciosa. Yeah, is it like Mitragynine or something? Whatever the fuck it is. <clears throat> kratom is addictive. Be careful. Yes, kratom is addictive. Uh, my girlfriend went to the doctor and like, like anytime like like she takes kratom for for her own reasons and like whenever she's in pain, like instead of taking ibuprofen, she just prefers to take kratom. She told the doctor. Um, because she fucked up her finger, she told the doctor that she had taken kratom. The doctor's like, "You take anything?" She's like, "Yeah, kratom." She said the doctor's demeanor entirely changed, and he was like, "Don't take kratom." And like, he went on to give like a, a anti kratom speech. He's like, "People take it for detoxing drugs, but really, they can get addicted, and it can make you crazy." And like this person, um, so yeah, at the same time, like it, it it is addicting as every other chemical is, as most other things are in life. It has potential for addiction and abuse. But um, in and of itself, it's it's pretty chill. Kratom is cool. I would I would try it again. I would try it again. But then again, I personally like wanted to try like most most drugs that I could, aside from meth and heroin. Like I was down to try it all with uh, with those two exceptions. <clears throat> oh wow! Well, this is um, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Other kratom made me feel anxious on edge. My friend, his girlfriend is addicted to kratom and she is also anti-vax. That's just funny. <laughs> of course, someone who's anti-vax is like, yeah, fucking kratom, fuck the pharmaceutical companies. Um, but so here we have a better, more insightful um, post. So from Llama, recently tapered off 10 to 15 grams of kratom a day. I would still say coffee is more addictive. Exactly. Um, my dad takes kratom too. I turned my dad, my dad has like chronic back pain. And I was like, dude, he, he takes hydrocodone. But because he's like a opiate addict, he runs he runs through his pain pills like early every month, and then he withdraws. Like my dad, my dad has been a drug addict his whole life, and like even still, like as soon as the doctor gives him his pain pills, like he gets scraped, and then like for the first two weeks he's scraped, and then for the next two weeks he's like withdrawing. But uh, I I got him turned on to kratom. Was like, dude, when you run out of all your pills, like just take the kratom. And then he um yeah he he takes kratom a lot. He swears by it. Says it's like. A huge way to um make his pain better without like like making the same kind of like doped up effect as other pain pills <clears throat> okay from dj b another one thank you five dollars tell me about your dmt experience dmt is one that i never had access to um i would have i would have definitely i don't know if i would try it now just because i take when I experimented with hallucinogens similar to DMT, I did LSD. That was like the, I did LSD and mushrooms. Um, just those were like the only ones I could ever find. But um, yeah, they were, they were, it was crazy. It was just crazy, man. It was crazy. Uh, I, I took an eighth of mushrooms like two or three times, took a quarter, uh, a half eighth of mushrooms a few more times. Um, ecstasy, like cocaine, a few times. A lot of these I was limited just because of the of the amount of access. Adderall too, another one that I loved abusing it. One of my favorite drug combos was getting spun the fuck out on Adderall, crushing up Adderall, snorting it, being twacked out of my mind, and then popping a benzo, taking a whole Xanax bar to just come down. Because when you're all twacked out, like you can't sleep, and then it's unpleasant. It's great when you're snorting, and when you're it's great when you're twacked out. 
and when you're spun out but then when you're you're no longer high like your brain is depleted from all the happy chemicals and you just have the jitters and you can't sleep and it's like it's miserable so like to take a benzo to counteract that jittery oh man that was the most uh, addicting and also probably <laughs> damaging fucking drug combo that i ever got into <clears throat> Um, ketamine? No, dude, I never did ketamine. So ketamine is, I think, classified as a disassociative drug. I did, uh, what is it called? Dextromethorphan, like Robitussin. Uh, Dextromethorphan is like the reason why uh, coercing cough and cold and like robotripping, like uh, it's the active ingredient in those cough syrups. It's why they're over 18. You have to be over 18. So like I did that. I extracted Robitussin from cough syrup using like some chemical process. And then another time, I just chugged a bottle of generic Robitussin. Like, those were my only experiences with disassociatives. And I actually had horrible times each time. Both times I was under the influence of dextromethorphan, it was fucking awful. The first time I extracted it chemically, and then, like, I just felt like I, I felt like my stomach was made of rubber, and I just felt sick and, like, drunk and, like, slurred. And it was, like, like, it was, it was just negative. And then, um, the second time I just chugged the cough syrup, I chugged the cough syrup and then I tried to eat and like I took one bite of my food and like immediately almost vomited. Like it was it was sickening. I think it just has like a disgusting uh, Im impact with my with my stomach. Like that shit fucks me up. <clears throat> I had a bad trip on shrooms and went into a white void for like five minutes, but lost all sense of time and place. LMA, yeah, dude, that can definitely happen. Um, hey, it's like Hunter S. Thompson said, you buy the ticket and you take the ride. Like once the drugs are in your body, they're just in your body and you just have to roll along with whatever's going on. There's no eject, especially if it's like a chemical, like um, a chemical like DMT or acid, some, something that's it's measured so small, like vomiting a vomiting alone is not even going to save you from the trip you know <clears throat> can we go back to trolling maurice Roland? hey we can go back to trolling uh whoever the fuck they are <clears throat> okay so that's funny this chat is overactive at the mere mention of drugs is that so uh, I wonder why. Uh, I wonder what it says. I wonder what it says about my druggy viewers. Are you guys my druggy friends, like Jeff Stacy said? No, I, I guess that's not that surprising. Um, people who are like strongly anti-drug probably hear the way that I talk and are like, "This guy sounds like a fucking burnt out like pothead." Like, uh, I think that the way that I speak alone probably deters a certain type of person from even like fucking with these kinds of videos or live streams. So like yeah that makes sense um a, a good proportion of you likely smoke weed as well or at least like open to the idea of smoking weed occasionally too that's probably just um by coincidence or not by coincidence you know <laughs> oh my god i just took a zan right now <laughs> hey good luck bro you'll probably sleep really well uh assuming that it's like nighttime or whatever where you're at yeah, I'm just saying, let's go back to TCAP. I mean, we did just go over this guy. Well, I was on this page in particular because we went to, um, yeah, we can do. Let's actually look at this. Um, okay. <clears throat> so now, yeah, I'm not even going to give this guy any fuck. This dude is like super happy with the, um, with the takedowns he might even try and take me down just for fucking showing this image but whatever so this is his youtube channel as i posted in the description of this video i can't think of a person who benefits more from the removal of the dislike button like it used to be when dislikes were public this guy had like 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 hundreds of dislikes on every video um he has chose to hidden the like and dislike so we don't even get to see but um I believe there's a time when they were public and I believe they were overwhelmingly negative. And then regardless of the dis the dislike and like ratio, regardless of that, pretty much every comment that this guy has on his page is someone making a TCAP reference. Like everyone, look at, we have Big Sam, <laughs> another content creator. Um, every one of these comments, let's just read a few. You ever thought about a US tour places like Bowling Green, Kentucky, or Murphy, Texas, where you don't mess with Murphy. Wow, songs like this don't come around often. I want to listen to it again and again. Every single one of these comments. Oh, here, gosh, this song is pretty. Bald Beaver Hunter, of course. 
Um, I knew it, baked salmon. I knew what this was. I just wanted to test it. They have Christopher Cannons, Cute though, built good. Michael Willis. Um, this song is not my style. I'm just looking to work. JPW. This is like a fucking pop quiz of um of different predators and the ridiculous lines that they've given. But like, this is the only. Okay, so perfect. So there have been people who have successfully baited this guy into actually fucking um in, into actually like like responding. So from War Gutsy. <clears throat> You have CD versions. I must go shopping. I forget that guy, but that that predator. I think they're talking about boots or something. I must go shopping is a is a predator line. Although I forget that guy's name. <laughs> yes, on CD Baby. What the fuck? Okay, CD Baby must be the website, as opposed to him saying yes on CD Baby. Oh, wow. I thought that was really weird. I was gonna be like, what the shit, dude? He's calling him Baby, but no, that's probably just the website. And then someone is mocking PC with this brain. <laughs> I got a twack, baby. <laughs> um, so let's see if there are any more responses. See, you can put that album on the CD player anytime, right? Anthony Palumbo put in the... Okay, perfect. Two words. Great songwriting, right? David Schumacher, role play chat room. Um, and then Steven, oblivious as ever. Thank you. Much appreciated. So even when this guy responds to a comment, it's just a veiled TCAP reference or a TCAP joke that he doesn't fucking get that goes above his head. But every look at fantasy is dreamed online or fantasies dreamed up online are in the mind. Dude, these are all TCAP references. And he's probably making a little bit of money by running ads like 14K views is I don't think it's that I don't think it translates to a significant sum of ad revenue that is uh, generated. And geez, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it, bro. It just boggles my mind that Stephen GC thought that he'd be able to have this kind of chat with someone who declared themselves as a minor show up and then still regain his status as a musician, like how he could still try and be a public figure. It's just mind blowing. And then here, I really don't want um, even a second of this guy's fucking music to play. Perfect. Okay. This song right here, Always Be Young. Really? That's the song that you choose? You choose Always Be Young when you've been featured on To Catch a Predator after trying to show up to have sex, anal sex with a 13-year-old? The, the song title you go with is Always Be Young? But the parentheses on Venice Beach, that, that, that negates all of, the, uh, all of the culpability of his acts. <clears throat> yeah perfect so every single song this guy has this makes me relax when i drink my wine and eat my cookie <laughs> chocolate chip is so this is straight up brian goslin um it looks like he does in fact have a last name and he used that name to make this comment <clears throat> yeah so here we have someone who's commenting always be young with a with an annoyed face which is the appropriate response it's just crazy um Steven's Steven's attempt at still being a celebrity even after the destruction of his life um it's crazy I implore everyone to just hit the thumbs down and like troll the fuck out of him and just talk shit to him because fucking lord knows he deserves it more than most people <laughs> so yeah um I'm thinking about wrapping it up um I'll probably be be ending it right now Thank you to everyone for stopping by, regardless of what time it is, whether for me it's now 7.37, so like, thanks for chilling here on Saturday evening, but if it's wherever for you, like whatever morning, then good morning too. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the future, and then let me know what else I can do to just improve the quality of the stream. Like, I removed the chat box because um, people said it was like disrupting it. Hopefully there were less disruptions. Um, I mean... I a person could like be dissatisfied that I'm still reading them I guess like there's still intrusion but um I think it's fair for me to read people like if they super chat like I think the least I can do is is read it I think that's like completely fair but um yeah let me know just like like future advice on like how I can make the stream better because like I'm I'm not like obviously perfect like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing I'm kind of new to this you guys so like whatever you can say like whatever um constructive criticism you guys can give like would would greatly be appreciated because I would I would try and implement it so yeah thank you everyone um and let me know what you guys want to see um comment below with what you want to see or whatever uh I'll probably be doing another stream soon it feels really good to be back I'll say that oh shit so before before we head out okay 
Uh, another thank you, dude. You've you've done it a lot tonight. Thank you, DJ B. Give me a Corey Edgar, dude. Exactly. There's so many that I haven't done, and like this live stream format makes it so much easier to just like run through a fucking complete predator analysis. So like, guys, it feels great to be back. Like, I know I took a long vacation. I took I took a step away uh, after cranking out a lot of videos, but like. It feels really good to be back. Uh, I forgot how much I just enjoyed doing this. And like, you guys are the reason why I enjoy doing this, you know? I always made these videos like loving what people were gonna say. Like when I first made my channel, I tried to respond to every comment. I eventually stopped just because like, it's really difficult. There's just like thousands of comments now. Like I, I, it would just be like overwhelming to try and respond to everyone. But like, I tried really hard when I first made this channel to like respond to every comment, especially critical ones, like people who talk shit or people who like, like didn't like it. Um, if you look through my comments, like you guys will see, I try to respond to people who talk shit and I'm, it, it, it's almost kind of fucked up and it's kind of unfortunate, but like, I'm more inclined to respond to someone who's like hella shit talk. I don't know. I guess that's just like, uh, my personality but um yeah i don't i don't like to edit like uh what i do i don't even like to edit posts like i don't like to delete stuff everything all the videos that i've made are still up even my old videos um so yeah that's uh that's what's up thank you guys for listening and um let me know how i can improve things in the future until next time